Right, I think I'm here. I've got sound. Yes, excellent. <clears throat> Three minutes late. That's just terrible. I'm never late. Make sure it comes through. Three minutes late. That's yeah. terrible. Yeah, sweet. Okay. Hey, Ian. Doro. Dave. David. Willem. Chris. John. So, my plan today is to, yeah, I'll, I default a Danger Mouse Cup, yes, that's exactly why I'm late, actually. Exactly right. Um, the plan today is to do some video recording and repairs, hopefully, on the HP 3561A. So, I've got RAM, I've got riser cards, so I've got everything I need to continue with the repair. So the plan is to sit down with that and pull it apart and see if we can fix it. Discharging CRTs, yeah. Yeah, no thanks. <laughs> I'm actually amazed I never zapped myself when I was working with CRT stuff. I was so careless. Yeah, the CRTs. Like, I used to work on um, the old IMAX, the original IMAX, those, what they call the Five Flavors version, different colours, those polycarbonate bloody shells on them. And um, the flyback transformers were really bad at failing on those things. And for a while there, I was actually doing conversions, so I'd actually get a broken IMAX, build it into a PC case, and modify the video input and stuff like that and actually have it running as a in a PC case with a video output on the back for VGA and running with that and uh, replace the um, CD drive as well all that sort of stuff and yeah so but the flybacks were always bad on those that's what went, that's what went wrong with them flybacks went bad they'd start internally shorting and that's the end of that you couldn't buy them so but that's how I did it I was, I was putting them into a new case but I got into that quite late so they've been around for a while at that point and so the popularity of them was dropping off a bit because they were relatively slow compared to what else was out there at the time so they weren't really as popular anymore and there's like no money in it or anything I, I'll buy a broken one and fix it and I would only make like $30 so because of the cost of the case and the power supply and because you have to build, get a PC power supply and adapt it and that sort of stuff and yeah wasn't a good money maker yeah Mac 5200s let's move this chat around I've got the chat right over here I need to put it right by the camera so I'm looking kind of in line. This looks wrong otherwise. Alright. And the chat needs to be included. Why is the chat not included? I set this up every time. It's a bit annoying. Uh, probably let's, let's find it. Um, Google. Where is it? Well, that's weird. It's not even showing up. Okay. Um, ah. Okay. Right. Show windows of empty names, then it popped up. There we go. Weird. Okay, we've got it now. It's the wrong size, but you know. Should be. 
Can we get the size so it sits properly in the OBS window? There we go. Something like that, innit? Yeah. Okay. Back to reading the chat. Um, 24kV, yep. Hey, Joe. Plan of attack. Yes, well, I've got the service manual. Got that too. I also got. Um, I might have a look at this using it on here because I've got this tablet which just arrived. For me to do a review on. I've got a supposed to review this thing. Um, I only basically turned it on for the first time last night. Still got to figure out how to use it. What's the battery lock up to being sitting on all night? 98%. I left it turned on all night, sitting there. 98%. So I've actually put the service manual on this tablet. I was thinking maybe I could have it next to me when I'm looking over here instead of having the big manual. And um, it might be easier for me to actually work on the desk here with this. Um, that is the plan. But the. That's why I actually agreed to review this tablet. Thought, well, it's not the sort of thing I'd normally do. Is one of these tablets? It's not what I'd normally be doing reviews on. It's tech, you know. But I thought if I get a tablet, I could have it over there with me on desk, and I could work on something with the desk, and I can actually have it in, in camera shot. And you can see the diagrams on that. I could like blow it up so you can see it on camera, or actually have it with me when I'm working on stuff. And this makes it easier than having like when it's big manual spread out across the desk plus the thing I'm trying to work on. Or having to come back over to my computer over here and um, try and view it on screen and go back up to forwards, which is a bit of a pain. I've always wanted to have a, a circuit diagram screen over here, um, but I just don't have the space for it. Or I have the test gear there. But um, lots of lag in the chat. Yeah, I've got a 30, I think it's about 30 seconds. So what you see on screen is lagging, but it tells you how long it takes me to see it, if I, if I see it because I'm not reading. Um, it's on low latency. It's not live, like real time. Should try doing that one again because I, I did it once. And it seemed to cause a few issues with that, you know, near real time kind of thing. Because my internet connection being a bit dodgy, I've dropped a few frames already today. So I dropped four hundred and fourteen frames. So anyway, I'm getting kind of sidetracked. I'm trying to drink my coffee and wake up. So what I was looking at doing is going through the procedure and the manual to a point. I mean, the diagnostic code when it boots up says exactly which RAM chip it thinks is bad. So we could either go straight to that. Hey, Sheridan and Christian. Yeah, I need more coffee, definitely. So... We could just replace the RAM and then retry, or we could try going through the process because it's actually possible that there's a different card affecting the RAM bus, which could then give false errors. That's also a possibility. So I'm, I'm thinking, well, logically, it's probably an idea to eliminate the other card first, but it's also telling us exactly which RAM chip it is. So it's like I'm kind of torn between those two methods right now. I think I'm going to go with eliminating the other card first, just to be absolutely sure it's definitely the RAM, and not some other card affecting the bus. So that's the plan, I think, is to do that. And because I've got riser cards here, they've arrived, although I need to solder them up yet because they're actually not soldered. Um, they come as like a semi-assembled kit sort of thing. Um, the guy that makes them, he just basically tacks them on there, gets them lined up, tacks them on, and you have to finish it off. Um, and so if I need to use riser cards, I've got them, I'll just have to finish soldering them up first. Do you have to heating up my 40? Yeah, I could try that, couldn't I? If it's MT, no, it's not MT, it's... Um, HM, 
with a brown HM was, I've forgotten. I don't think it's a tar sheet, it's something else. Um, now I'm going to go and look. Oh well, and this window's in the way. Bear with me whilst I try and find it. I'll pull the data sheet up. It's a GIF. Hmm. Oh no, it's just the image. So that's pin out which I used the other day for something. Now I get the data sheet. This makes more sense. I shall show you it. So this data sheet I've got does it have a brand in there? Hitachi. It is Hitachi. Okay. Yeah. So this is what I've got in there now. Uh, there's different speeds, wasn't there? Does it cover the three speeds? It does, yeah. So what's in there now is the P3. What I've got is P2, which is slightly faster, which shouldn't matter. So... And the one I actually got, they look like brand new chips. It looks like they've never been used. The pins are still slightly spaced out and that sort of stuff. I've only tested one or two chips so far out of the nine I got. Um, and the ones I tested have been okay. But because I don't have a ZIF socket for my tester, I've ordered some, I haven't arrived yet. Um, this is off screen a little bit, isn't it? I'm going to put it over here more so I can see what it is. Um, I don't want to splay all the legs. In, I want to just want to use them as they are, you know, and just actually use as if. Because I've just got an IC socket on my test board right now. But the. Oh, you haven't seen it yet, because I've only just recorded the video. Tomorrow you see that the IC test that I purchased, or one of the IC tests I purchased, that I finally arrived. Right yesterday. Um, yeah, don't really care about that stuff, do we? Yeah, anyway, it's that's what they are. What's the clock speed in the system? Uh, I remember seeing something about two, 2 2.048 megahertz and 5.12 megahertz. I saw those mentioned. Anyway, so well, you, part of the diagnostics of the, of the actual testing to figure out which area of the unit is playing up, based on the diagnosis, diagnost, I can't say, based on the diagnostics process within the service manual, it says to lift this other card to el eliminate it from being an influence on the data bus. So. And that makes sense because it could be one chip on the other card which is dragging that particular line down at that particular moment at the same time as it's trying to use the one which it's identifying as being bad. So. I think it's got AO051 in it, I think. You need to shift work. Go buy one, it's on my merch store. YouTube's being funny. Can you guys see merch on my live stream? Because I've got merch and it's linked to YouTube, but YouTube says I don't have any merch. But it's linked. And Teespring, which is who the merch is through, um, 
say it's fine. Teespring says it's linked. YouTube says it's linked. But then YouTube also says I've got no merch. One hundred kilohertz refresh. Remember that much? Yes. Hey Johnny. So that be. I think there's links down in the description of my chat. I think there's links down there to the Teespring thing anyway, if you get so inclined. Link works for you. Okay, cool. Yeah, just I don't know. If I look at my videos, I've got like a merchandise option on my videos. It says there's nothing there. If I try and set up and live stream, it says nothing. Then I, I can actually like attach one, you know, like feature a product. Doesn't work. <laughs> it says I don't have anything anyway. So there's things which YouTube is supposed to allow don't work. But yeah, I've got lots of different designs over there. Just one of them. I've got reefer caps and stuff like that. Right, it's a coffee done. Cats. I've got one here, down here asleep next to me on the floor. On a little cat bed. She spends a lot of time here these days. Little ginger and white cat. You haven't seen this one, I don't think. You don't see any merch? Yeah. See, that's the thing. Um, okay. Clinking of the car, it's not the video. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Anyway, it just doesn't work properly, so it's a bit restrictive. So, let's see. Um, yeah, like I said, I've got I've got this bloody tablet thing. I need to figure out how I'm gonna like get this into my system so it works for me. Um, it's the only reason I agreed to get it is because I thought I could use this tablet at the desk there whilst I'm working on stuff because otherwise I'm not really interested in reviewing tech it's just not really relevant unless someone wants to give you a brand new iPhone maybe I'd say yes but um, maybe maybe <laughs> um, yeah that's why I thought this would be a good fit because I can then use this on the video recordings and stuff to bring the diagrams up and stuff like that so that's the only reason I agreed to it I thought it would be handy I need to add pink LEDs. I don't know about that, Johnny. <laughs> um, hello. Is that Lake? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Address what he does. Got the monster apart the hallway. He wasn't really thinking that through with the boards. Right, yeah, sometimes they intermesh, don't they? Um, not only have the LEDs running just for live streams, just to have something in the background going on. Um, that's the only reason I don't turn it off for live streams, otherwise they're normally turned off. How radio call sign? Oh, yeah, okay. LA7KYA, right. In Norway, right. Vladimir, how's it going? So yes, we'll get this on the bench in a minute and start poking away at it. And I'll record the video as well at the same time. So you might have to try and keep my concentration up and record video whilst talking to you guys and fixing the thing. <laughs> Three things at once. Oh. I can't even hold up one not I can't even hold up the right number of fingers. <laughs> you got any icon? Pass the signal limit. Yes you did. Well done. <laughs> um I think after that is it after a year I think it is? If you don't I think it goes to a single red one, I think. Instead to show the next level up. Pink is a baby, so <laughs> Clive likes pink. I sent him a pink mug 
oh, two or three years ago. I sent him one, one of my mugs in pink. I think he, yeah, he featured it in the live stream once. I asked him about it, and he actually brought it out and showed it. <clears throat> Rewriting a VB GUI subroutine is running twice when I clicked it. It was your mouse. <laughs> oh dear. Double clicking mouse. Automatic double clicking. That's Isn't that term like energy saving? You just click it once and it does it for you. Gyuri, uh, how's it going? There's a pink container in the corner. Oh, yes, there is. Mouse double clicks. Mouse problems, eh? Right, let's get on with this thing. So, we'll get this thing on the bench here. We'll look at the... Actually, let's pull the mangle up first before we go over there. So you guys ever... You can follow along a bit better. Um, once I find it again. I'll put it on screen up here first. Should have left it open yesterday. I don't think I did, did I? No. Let's find it. P five six one. We want manual uh, volume two. Let's get this. Uh, I think it's about page two hundred or something around there. Around there somewhere. Seven fifty five. No, that's not right. Was it in the volume one? No, it's volume one. I've opened one again. We've got a super chat. Thanks a lot, Vladimir. Two hundred rubles. <laughs> Less than coffee, more than a pack of sugar. <laughs> Thanks a lot, mate. Well, my coffees are cheaper than buying to buy because you know it's just a, I make it at home. So you probably have paid for a coffee. <laughs> um, right, I think it's about two hundred. I think. Uh, yeah, I'm close. Let's test the D we want. SD. All right, let's get this big enough so you can read it. Hopefully. Can we go slightly more? Probably well, we can, actually. Right, here we go. So test D is one which mentions all this other stuff, and this is 20.48, sorry, I'm remembering it wrong. I did mention 2048 somewhere as well. Must have been a divided, a divided down signal. Um, so it mentions the actual self-test procedure, and it's got LED indicators which tell you what's going on as well as what's on the CRT, in case your CRT is not working. And the RAM comes from this definition here, RAM failure, 726, 731. Those two codes come up. Not the 327, though. And what I haven't looked for yet is this indicator here, the same greater than one error. But as we do have two error codes, I don't know if that's actually going to matter or not anyway. So I might have to watch out for that LED there coming up. Um, this is scrolling really slowly. <laughs> Let's do page down instead. So this is the process here. Where's the relevant bit? Um, try to find it. Oh, right, this makes it a bit small, so I can see what I'm doing. Yeah, 
I've got to try and follow this path through again, so it's next page. Whoever that is. Hey Fred, how's it going? So here we go, here's a bit I'm looking for. So I missed the power testing over here and the 726 731 codes but also shows us 0327 code which we're not getting we're not getting that code but this is where it mentions removing the a20 assembly and retesting all right um, so if you pull that card out retest it you don't get an error code then the a20 assembly is the problem not the ram card so that's what's what i want to do i just want to lift the a20 out and retest so I think that's going to be a fairly simple thing to do. You've got to take a few screws out and pop the card out. So I've got to get those screws out anyway to get to the RAM card. So there's no extra work really apart from popping the card out. So I think we'll do that. We'll lift the A20 card out and um, look at it that way. And um, hey Andy, how's it going? So we'll do that. And just eliminate that card. Then we know for sure it's definitely not an influence of that card, which is mentioned in here as a possible cause. Um, there's also this diagnostics process over here, which we may or may not need to do. Um, yeah, if it still fails, it mentions about going through this process to diagnose on this card. But I don't think we'll bother with that. If we just eliminate the A20 card, if nothing changes, then um, we'll replace that RAM chip. Yeah, the RAM tester is a pretty simple project. I mean, it took me way longer than it should have done. Something held me up. What will help me up? It took you basically a day to design it and build it all. Something held me up. So I, I had something which which um, caused a problem. What was that? Can't think of what it was now. Something held me up anyway. It made me um, have some problems trying to sort something out. What was that? Ah, right, yes. I had two data lines back the front. So the, the lines for the screen... Because I'm on Perth Ball, somehow I swapped over the data and clock on the screen. I was trying to figure out why the screen wasn't working. <laughs> anyway, it turned out, yeah, I said those bloody two lines swapped over somehow. And that, I think I lost about an hour from that. And then I had um, tweaking the design to allow for like switching of the power. So the thing can actually completely power off the chip when it's in between tests. Things like that. So, anyway, let's go do some work on the disk. That's what we're here for. I just want to turn my air conditioning down a bit more. It's still a bit warm here. It's probably all hot air I'm waffling. The other thing I might do actually is swap the fan out on this thing because it is quite a noisy fan. I mean, I've lubricated it. Well, actually, worries me a little bit. Is I lubricated it with oil, right? And because I had to like basically run it through the fan to get it to the bearings, I'm worried there's oil floating around inside the fan. And that's probably not a good thing. <laughs> Pop this cover off. I also repaired this cover and this tilting bar. I think you've seen that one? I think I probably shut my fire, didn't I? I think I did. So what I'm worried about is having the oil in the fan is that maybe it might go bang. <laughs> I mean, hopefully it's, it's been run a bit since then, so hopefully it's sort of flung itself out a little bit. Yeah. Oh, let's just um, plug this in. Pair it up. Switches off, yes. All right, so if it goes bang, here we go. If the fan goes bang, I'll be replacing it anyway. 
you know, still good. <laughs> One sure, because we're sitting on its end for a little while, so I might be always ran somewhere. So, yeah, no different. 726, 731, that's all we've got. So, let's get this thing open. Get my camera set up as well. And more lighting. Worry about my HDMI cable it goes into my camera. It's a bit glitchy recently. Hoping it's the cable connection, not the actual socket on the camera. I'm to try and get that apart. That'd be fun. Sort of fun like Dave had trying to pull his one apart. Mind you, his is a bit different than mine. I'm trying to get this camera set up as well, so I'm ready to record. Amazes me how tight this is in the casing. It's incredibly tight in this casing. Kind of beavers in there. Once you pop it off, it's alright. You know? I did mark which cards are which on the side rails over here and over here which you can maybe just see if I get this tipped right so I should be able to go straight to the Kirk card now so if I'm going to look it up each time and figure it out This is still plugged into power. This is earthed, so I've now already earthed myself out by touching it. You worry about static electricity and stuff like that. As you should be when you're working around RAM. Okay, 820 board is this one over here. So I'll pop that one out. You probably can just lift it rather than taking it all the way up. Yeah, let's take it right out. I'm not for sure, it's definitely not touching. Bridge that there. Right, we'll power it up again, see if anything's changed. This reflection's quite bad. Is that coming from that? It is coming from that. Let's move this out of the way. Self test, same error codes, no difference. Okay, we know it's not the A20 ball. Let's put that back in. Oh, I should have recorded that. Shouldn't I? Well, I'm an idiot. Let's record that. So I'm working on this thing still. I have. Just done a little test, which I'm going to repeat because I forgot to record it because I'm an idiot. And that is to pull out the A20 ball as part of the diagnostics process in the service manual. Lift that ball out to make sure that that card is not affecting the RAM bus because it's a parallel bus. And if you have something else on the bus which is causing a problem, it may cause it to think that there's an error on a particular card when it's actually somewhere else. This happens to be on the same data lines as the one it thinks is bad. So I'm going to pull this card out, we've done that, I'm going to show you again anyway. So it's A20 board, I'll just take it out. 
and that is a parallel bus to the ram so if we pull this up now and do a test we'll see the error codes come up again which proves that it's not the A20 ball which is causing the problem but I want to show you this anyway so doing the display test start test error code still there so that's 0726-0731 um, actually, did it still say RAM F down the bottom? I should check that. Because previously it was saying RAM F down here, which tells us which RAM module it is. So I just want to make sure that still comes up the same as well. I should look for that. Yep, RAM F. Exactly the same. Alright, so that's all good. So, push cards RAM on. Was it the 30? I think it was 30 RAM was on. E309. So, yes, it's right there. There it is. Okay. So the RAM is on A30 board, which I've marked on the chassis here, which is the one with the orange indicator. I've already lifted the board out, so I want to show you. So RAM F is defined as being this network of RAM over here. So it's 0 to 16, basically, well, 0 to 15. That's what F is, 15. And there's actually U309, so it's this saying this chip here is bad. That's what it's indicating anyway. So what we'll do is we'll take this chip out. We'll test it because I've got two testers now. One I built and one I just purchased. And we can test out the RAM, make sure it's actually bad. And also, if we, regardless of what happens, I'm going to put in a socket and I'm going to install a socket and then that way we can put the RAM in, into a socket. That way, if we do have more RAM problems, we can just plug them in instead of desoldering the ball. Because I don't, no, each time we solder a ball, there's a risk of damaging it. So especially trying to get chips out, it's always harder. Wait. Can you check the chat for a second? Hey, Kimmy. Chris is here. Thanks again. Uh, right. CPU is a 6800. Okay. Yeah, I'll fit one of those fans on thinking. I mean, the fan's not that bad now I've oiled it. It's got a lot quieter, but it's still fairly prevalent. So I'm kind of tempted to replace it. But we'll deal with the hard thing first. It's interesting seeing the lag. Yeah, I might actually have another go next time I do a stream to do a low latency, well, ultra low latency one, so it's near real time instead of doing the low latency. Because the last time I did low latency, I think the first time I did it, it was okay. The second time I tried using it, it gave trouble. Um, <clears throat> yeah, let's try and catch up with the chat here. Dora has been reading. <laughs> he probably has more knowledge of how it works than I do right now. I just tend to dive in. <laughs> I'll look at figuring out how it works if I need to. Right. I suppose I'm a bit lazy like that. <clears throat> well, not used to talking so much. I've been not talking much in the past couple of weeks because I've obviously been off work for Christmas. Well, not, not, not necessarily obviously, but I've been off work for Christmas. Not everybody gets a break for Christmas. Not everyone's that lucky. Fortunately, I do.
Right. Get the solar station going. So on here, actually I should record this too, and adjust the camera setup so you can see. I will do two cameras at once. Let's do zoomed. Or I could just run it through the camera and didn't see what the camera sees. Could do that too. Hmm. Which video do you want? Do you want the camera off the webcam or do you want the actual camera? Sometimes that's better. Time to go for you. You only just got here. <laughs> Thanks for dropping by, mate. Let's plug this camera in. Let's do this. Alright, let's just go to HDMI, there we go, you get the same view as the other camera, I think that's a better idea. Probably also somewhat cleaner. Look at that, leaving. do you reckon I should get it in focus? Ooh, trippy. My cat's here. Now I would pick her up and show you, but I don't want to pick up a cat whilst I'm doing my ram chips. <laughs> really, is it jumping up and down? That's interesting. Did the pump module I fix work? I don't know yet. Um, don't get back to work till tomorrow. And I, um, I don't think we're getting the plant running until Tuesday, feed the cat. Yeah, well, she's turned down her breakfast. She only had about half of it. It's her own fault. Um, and she just left. Let's put out a cat flat. Right, so what was I going to say? I've gone. I've completely forgotten what I was going to say. Oh, yes, pump module. Yes, so the. Um, the module has to still be tested by the hydraulic specialist to make sure it actually works or is not any worse broken than it was before I got it and then they'll put it in the machine so because I don't have insurance and that sort of stuff they, um, they're super cautious even though I've removed the short circuits which would have potentially broken the machine even further anyway so what well, no yet I'll let you know I'll, I'll probably post a comment on a video or something Later on, once I actually know whether or not it actually worked, because I only tested what I could test. I couldn't, I can't say for sure, yes, it's working. I just don't know. Right. So at least now I can see from my monitor camera here, or my monitor, camera monitor, um, what you guys can see. So at least I know if you're missing the shot or not. The U309 is over here, right there. Now, if you're particularly worried about damaging a circuit board, the safest way of taking the chip out is to cut the legs off and take out each leg individually. But when you've got a desoldering gun, it makes it a little bit easier. Hey George, I can't touch you. My other cat's here. Cat number two is here. That's the ginger one, which has been featured before. So even though I cleaned this board up before, there's still some dust on it. So it looks like it's still got some dust floating around the chassis, which has been blown onto this board again. What did I... No, actually, no, it's a bit stuck there. I almost did a bad job. Let's just brush it off before I do soldering on it. And cake it on with flux. So yeah, it's, it's, the safest way is to cut the legs off, but if the round chip's okay, I don't want to waste one. 
<laughs> so, uh, I'm going I'm to try this older again and see how well it goes first. I should probably be recording that, shouldn't I? Well, that's kind of tips. I'm not sure about this camera angle. It's not quite right. Yeah, kind of there somewhere. Right, so this is U309 here, which I have to desolder. Now, the way to do this in a really safe way, if you're not worried about potentially saving the chip, is to just cut the legs off the chip from the other side and then take out each leg individually one at a time. That gives you a, a much lower chance of damaging the circuit board. But if you think the chip may potentially still be okay, you obviously don't want to destroy it. You might think, okay, well, I'm absolutely certain that chip is bad. It could still be something else. So I don't want to waste a chip which could potentially be salvageable. Now, if you've got a chip which is really common, you know, really common to get, cheap chip, which is really easy to, you know, you don't have to worry about it, then sure, cut the legs off and replace it regardless. But these chips are a little bit harder to get and a little bit more expensive. So I don't want to waste one unnecessarily because um, it may be I'll replace this chip and find out it's still not this chip. It could be something else making it think it's that chip. It Maybe a broken trace even, who knows? Although I think I did actually eliminate that already. I'm not sure if I remember testing that or not. I might have done. Or just cross my mind. So I'm going to desolder that chip, which is U309. And we'll chuck it in a tester and see what the tester thinks of it. And I'll either put it back in or replace it with a new one. Maybe the tester doesn't even say it's bad. It might still be something which the tester can't detect. It could be a speed thing or a timing issue, which is showing up in this test routine but not on the tester it's also possible so you know I'm gonna put a socket back in anyway so it's gonna be happening regardless but that chip's got to come out so let's get started hello George let's have a look Cat static here. Cat skin. <laughs> hey Dan, how's it going? Magic smoke insurance, yes. No, yes, Steve. I'm relying on the mat. The fact the mat's grounded, I'm just keeping my arms resting on it basically, so it shouldn't really be an issue. Although, being round, I should probably be more careful. Once I start taking chips out, need to see the cat. I'm not touching the cat, as I might get static and end up zapping everything. How many RAM chips are there? There are 16 RAM chips on that board. There's also a second board which has got RAM in it as well, which is for video memory, which is unrelated to this particular fault, hopefully. I think it's a separate bus, so I think it's fine. Right. This view doesn't have the chat overview. Why is the chat not on there? The chat should be on there. Why is it not showing up? That's weird. Ah, oh, there we go. Well, it turned off. Because I'm worried about obscuring the picture. Yeah, probably. I'll just like turn it off on purpose in the past. So the cat you can hear meowing is George, which is the one you've seen previously, is the completely ginger one. And the one which I had in here before squeaking. Actually, no, she's still in here. It must have been George coming in, I heard. Um, that's the ginger and white, which I think I've shown once. Um, yeah. Okay, let's uh, just take precautions. As I'm 
you know, you're right, I should have an anti-static strap on. And if I don't do this, you can almost guarantee that someone will say something in the, in the comments in the video when I go to publish this thing. That, oh, you didn't have any static stuff. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I find that being really careful of what I'm doing has been the route that's worked for me. Oh, my solder must turn off. Let's wake it up again. It takes a while to call up. Uh, to warm up. So, you know, the fact that this, this bench is earthed, and it, what I do when I'm touching things is I touch a bench first to make sure that there's no path between the circuit board and the bench. You know, I always touch a bench first, the equipment I'm touching first before I touch the cards. When I put the cards back in again, I'm touching the equipment first before I put the cards back into the seats. So, the path is always for me to a ground path before going through the boards uh, or whatever I'm working on, you know. So, um, I'm very particular about touching the surfaces before the boards. Um, so I've never really worried about it too much because I'm always very particular about that. But it doesn't mean I can't make a mistake and potentially forget to do that and forget to touch the surface because I'm concentrating on something else. So yeah, anyway, earthed up now. Now to make sure I don't forget to untake it off when I walk away. <laughs> Uh, anyway, so over here we've got RAM chips. Got them in here. I've got both the testers here as well. Alright, um, let's get this chip out. So, what I'll do is I'll put a fresh solder on it first. Just not sure about this camera angle. Because I think I need to be closer for me to work on it, maybe. Yeah, maybe. Got to be careful about this camera angle and focusing because I have to use manual focus and everything. All right. So we're going to go. It's flux. All right, so let's desolder this chip. Let's get some flux on it. I'm going to do is I'll put some fresh solder on it first, and that just gives us a better chance of getting it out without struggling too much. The easier you can make it for yourself the better. I'm going to use silver solder on this even though I'm desoldering anyway it just helps it flow a bit better I think. Stack with this camera. Right. Let's put fresh solder on this. Probably should have my fan going, but it's noisy. It almost gives us a chance to soak through. Make absolutely sure it's done. Try to make sure it goes through to the other side of the ball, which because it's a double-sided ball, it needs a bit more to get through there. Now, the reason I'm not dragging it across is because I don't want to move the solder from one pin to the next. I just want to keep it on that one. I'll put it on, so it has a chance to flow through. So they're getting dragged to the next pin. You know, a blob at one end. I should do it. Now let's try desoldering it. Mm. 
Don't cuss hide it. bent over slightly as well so I'll try and straighten them up. Didn't go as well. Could have gone to ground plane. No, maybe not. Maybe it's internal plane. Yeah, that one didn't solder properly. Let's do it again. I think this is multi layer ball. That one's internal plane. There's no trace on the top either, I can see that. Go to go down again. Mm. Right. Let's check to see if they're okay or not. Give these pins a wiggle, see if they move. No. A little bit. No. A little bit. Yeah, it's going to be a pain. This side's desoldered, but the other side hasn't. I might be cutting pins off after all. None of those are really moving. Well, that's annoying. It's almost worked, but not quite. Okay, I'm going to cut pins off. It's not worth the risk. So U309 is this one here. It's a shame, but it's probably there anyway. All right, so I'm gonna cut the pins off this thing because I've really got no choice. I don't want to risk damaging the circuit board. It's too hard to desolder this. And if I persevere with it, I could do it. And you can see, I cut the pins have desoldered. I'd rather just cut it off. It's not worth risking the board. 
just for the sake of a chip, you know. If I can do it, then great, otherwise, no. Nah. Some of these fins are flicking off, which is interesting. So, it's almost desoldered. That's half the chips done. All right, the other side. Make sure I'm on the right one still. <laughs> Get fun cutting the legs off the wrong chip. That'd be too easy to do. Some of these are popping out, so there we go. Good enough. All right, so bits flicking everywhere, so I need to make sure I find all those and get them out of the way. Shame because I did want to test that chip. Never mind. Let's see if we can get these other pins out. It's only barely held on, you know, but it's not worth risking ripping a trace out for that. I was hoping to get the chip out of one go so I could test it, but never mind. It's out now. Back to the chat. A dip remover iron. Hmm. Never heard of one. Catch up the chat. Give me a second. Hey Joey, thanks for the five bucks. Didn't need to do that. You already remember. <laughs> but thanks anyway. Why is it saying top chat again? I'm sure I'd change this to buddy live chat. Why does it always do that? It's annoying. We could top side, yeah, cut on that, but yeah, just cut the pins off. I've got chips. I've got nine chips, so, you know. Right, let's get a socket. So I'm a bit torn between using a turn pin socket and a wafer touch socket. So is it wafer? Is that one? Got two different types. Then you've got a turn pin, the other type. So I actually prefer the other type because I find them easier to use and less stress on the board getting chips in and out. Because the turn pin ones, I'm not even convinced they're actually much better. But what are your opinions on that? You think turn pins are better than the others or not? I think they're probably better quality, but I'm not sure about whether they're really that necessary. Trying to get a uh, socket separated. Because I've only got one turn pin. Because I've, I've used them in the past and I didn't like them because I found it hard to get the chips aligned and they put a lot of stress on. So I don't know. Hey Ray, again. Right, having a uh, one of these cheaper sockets. I do have a turn pin socket, but I actually prefer these, strangely. Turn pin ones are supposed to be better, but um, I actually prefer this kind of socket myself. So we'll pop that in. 
solder it on, and then we'll plug a new chip in and try it again. I'm pretty sure I have clearance to make sure I can put that card back in again. I should check for that, shouldn't I? Um, four inch goes that in. Oh, yeah. There should be enough clearance. Let me double check this. Did I record that last bit of footage? Or was I just talking to myself? Oh yeah, there's enough clearance. Judging by eBay, dipper irons are forgotten tech, really. Does mean I should pause what I'm doing and go and have a look for dipper irons on eBay. <laughs> Use turn pen, do you, David? Okay. Okay, let's go to eBay. Let's have a quick look. I'll have to bear with me for a minute. The screw of buying things. Dip, soldering on. I know I could. I've seen soldering on tips. No, those are the soldering irons. Obviously my search terms aren't very good. Dip iron. No. What search term are you using on eBay to find those things? I can't find them. Any other ones I can look for? Right. Um, Join line. I suppose I should look for Join line, shouldn't I? I should look for desoldering iron. Oh, JVC has tips today. Oh, okay. I know I've seen tips. Which means you just desold the whole thing in one go and just have a big blob and then clean it off. On go. Right. Yeah, it's probably what it is. Dip tips is probably what I should look for then. I know I've seen tips, so yeah, okay. Maybe I'll consider that. I mean, I've got a JBC clone, a Jabe, which is what I'm using. Yeah. I'll have to look for it. Okay, I'll look at that later on. camera. So you go socket to sit in there, just gonna flip it over, solder that in, and we'll carry on. It's got some EPROMs over here I think. Just there. Damn things are soldered in. <laughs> I'm taking them out. Let's 
That's against the board now. So you find out how bad my soldering is. <laughs> Right, let's get some flux on this. With my never ending flux, I would say, with my never ending flux tube. So it's never run out, it's incredible. So we'll solder. So let's get one pin soldered on, and I'll lift it and just make sure it's definitely sitting nicely. Using 300 degrees on this. These older boards, I don't like to use too much heat. But then I might need to uh, increase that to get the flow through the board a bit more. Right. So that. Give you plenty of resonance time to let it soak through the board. Choice is to use a lower temperature with a longer time or a high temperature with a short time. But um, because you're trying to get through the board, I prefer to use a lower temperature for a longer time in this case. Was touching the track next to it. Just want to lift it up just in case there's a solder mask problem. Or is the same track as it? Actually, same, same track doesn't matter. I'm wrong about nothing. Do you reckon good enough? Yeah, I reckon that's alright. I should be back in a second. Oh, it's got a tent or something. Small toilet break if you want to take a chance to have one as well. I'll come back and check the chat when I come back.
Right, back again. Chat to chat, then I'll carry on. I've tested the ch one of the chips, the chip I'm going to be putting in, it's one I've tested a few times. It's one I showed in the videos. This one that happens to be at the end of the tube. So, um... Betty Hobbyist, how's it going? <laughs> Red dot appeared on your screen, you can't shift it, yeah. That's when you know I'm not messing up. <laughs> uh... Can't show URLs in the settings. Yeah, I have links restricted to um, moderators only. David, you using one of my links. What's that link for? I got a dot user Shafi. Have you got a black dot now, Ian? <laughs> oh, that's the reason for dip arms, was it? Okay, yeah. Use tipex. <laughs> Legs double cost. P break, yes, indeed. I think one's called up. Vladimir. Uh, okay, hold on a second. Okay, Vladimir, you can post a link now. Recommend. Special with these holding holder. Oh, that's that low temp stuff. Yeah, I need to get some of that actually. I keep thinking about it lots of times, and each time I look at it, I go, oh, that's expensive. <laughs> there's a few, isn't there? There's like chip quick stuff, and there's some other ones. It's just, just really, yeah. Um, yeah, it's just very really much, very low melting temperature. This is a blow lamp and a pair of pliers. <laughs> Yeah, I think I need a bit more delicacy than that. Yeah, that low melt stuff does make stuff easy to get off the board because it flows so much better. Also makes it easier because it stays molten for longer, so you can actually like do blobbing and stuff like that, or as mentioned, a desoldering tip. Okay. Let's carry on with this. So what link are you trying to post for that here? What's that one you just hid? Did I miss one? Vum and go? What the hell is Vum and go? Killed two spammers so far, yeah, okay. Good on you. Rose's Metal. Haven't heard of that one. <laughs> Express A for a mod. <laughs> Is that how corruption works? Nice one. <laughs> Thanks a lot for having you. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll turn the chat off for that. There you go. Ball just got just catching fire. I suppose if you don't care about the ball, I suppose it doesn't matter, does it? Get the chip off, but yeah.
Right. Right, let's get back to this thing. Before it gets stuck in chat. Plus you're fixing something. That's what you're here for after all. The fixing. Um, let's just get this refocused. Get there. Right. So I'm pretty happy with that chip. Well, the socket at least. So really close inspection, make sure it definitely looks right. Let's look on camera. Got my old man's magnifier. <laughs> That's where I get myself parallaxed so I can see without going cross eyed. Still a little bit of flux residue on there. Do some more cleaning. more scrubby one though. I've got one of these. Basically it's this brush here and I'll just cut the bristles a bit shorter. Just makes it a bit stiffer. Paper apart. Yep, that's better. Happy with that. Oh, you put a socket in the right way up. Actually, I should video that bit because people, everyone's been caught out by that at some side, I'm sure. That should be featured in the video. Right, so the socket's in place. I've even managed to put the socket in the right way up this time. So, what I'll do before I put the chip in, I think I'll actually do a test on camera improve it works before I insert it. I need to get my um, tools. So I'm going to test the RAM before I put it in there, so we're absolutely sure that the chip I put in is working at the moment it goes into the board, or at least as well as my test can test. So I'll drop this in. Make sure the polarity is right. 10 volts, that's good enough. Test. So I've done this test a few times already on this exact chip, so it should be absolutely fine, but you never know. So I just want to be absolutely sure this chip is definitely good at the moment I put it into the board. Or at least as good as I can check for. Just takes a little while because because of the time it takes to update the screen, it slows it down as well because it adds into the overheads. If I didn't have a screen updating all the time, it'd be a bit quicker test. But uh, anyway, that's done. That's fine. We'll put it in.
also if you haven't seen this project, this is a little DIY project I built obviously on a bit of purple. I've designed a circuit board for this. So if you're viewing this video later on, when I've done recordings obviously, and actually publish this video, there'll be potentially a link down below. If there isn't one, ask me for it in the comments. Um, to go to the circuit board you can get from PCB Way, which has got the Gerbers, you can just go and take it somewhere else and get it made there if you prefer, it's up to you. But the Gerbers are there, you can get, get it from PCB Way, the firmware is there, there's a parts list, that sort of stuff. So you can build one of yourself. Um, common parts, it's not exactly hard, so it's basically going to be no Pro Mini and a regulator, which you don't really even have to use. You, you don't really have to have that, I just don't know as a precaution. But, uh, yeah, easy to build, so you know, it's a available saving source project. And if you want to modify the code and change it to how you want to use it, that's up to you. But uh, it's available. It's, did I just put my tweezers away? I did. Oh, excuse me. I do have an IC pin extractor, but it's on the other side of the room, I can't bother getting it. This looks fine if you're careful. Right. Again, it's not quite focused, is it? Right, let's install the IC. The pins all lined up before I push it down. Okay, and that's in. Should now put this into the board. Uh, should now put this into the unit and actually test it, see if it works this time. Fingers crossed. Sort the strap-ons on, put the cat up. I just spot herself on the screen again. Yeah. You're attention seeking, aren't you, eh? Hey? Come on. Better work. Still worked. <laughs> now can I strap reach? No, it can't. Enough to take it off. Other way, George. I might as well keep wearing it for the time being. So I've got the board in. Right, so we insert the curl rod. Let's just, uh, just plug this into power first, actually, just make sure the chassis is grounded. Things grounded, including me. Right. This goes in the other way around. Moment of truth. Will it work? Bet in the comments. Come on. Comment down below. Will it work? What, what do you reckon the odds are? Okay, let's 
set a strip off in it. Come on, check the chat. Keep all in suspense. Cat's got anti sight collar. <laughs> That's just the way, just ground the cat. <laughs> Uh, the chat thing's disappeared again, hasn't it? That's right, because I'll turn it off. Yeah, there yeah. we go. Let's do this. Right. At Mega 328, yeah, that's right. So, do we know Pro Mini? I think it's 328. It might be a 168. Could be either. Can't remember. Either one works. Okay, Lamy, let's look at your link. Chat's bouncing around. Oh, cutters, right. Well, wait, let's flick back a the go look back a long way, didn't it? Okay, that's what we were before. Here, because you nothing going on TV. That's true, there's nothing going on TV. Certainly, it's true, Adam. TV's pretty bad these days. It's about selling advertising, that's what it's about now. TV's here to sell advertising, not advertising to support the TV. Test gear manufacturer asked me to review some Volt DVMs. Actually, I've got some news on that. I I've been doing these low cost multimeter reviews, which I'm sure some of you've already seen. Um, I've got some more. I've got two more. Yeah, one already. I've got two already uploaded. Upload. upload I can't say it. This week's video is already uploaded and available to Patreons and members. Um, They've got another multimeter review this week. I've got one more for next week. What occurred to me is that I could be doing some other stuff too. So what I've actually done is I approached Fluke slash Pomona. It's like a joint company thing. Um, I had a contact at Pomona, which I just had been in contact with about a year ago for some test leads and a screwdriver set I use sometimes as well. I've got that as well. But the test leads are on my... my um, BM786 multimeter, those are the Fluke leads, well, Pomona leads that they sent me. Um, so I contacted them and said, hey, um, I'm doing these low cost multimeter reviews. I'm looking at a couple of multimeters. Would you be interested in sending me some? Well, sending me some. So I've got some more um, test lead stuff coming. And I've also got not one, not two, but three Fluke multimeters coming. Shouldn't all go through. It's all been arranged. It's been approved, but you know I don't want to jinx it yet. But it looks promising. It looks like that's what's going to be happening. So I'll be doing some fluke multimeter reviews as well, and doing some comparisons to show budget, but you know hobbyist grade meters versus fluke meters with the same kind of, of um, feature sets or similar feature sets. You know, as much as you compare them anyway. Death on pile of stuff on the TVM. <laughs> yeah. Hey, well, you know, if if all the YouTubers jump on and do D DVM um, reviews, we should cover them pretty well because each of us has got our own aspect of how we'd look at them. 
you know, I'm looking at the accuracy side. Some other people may look at more usability or certain aspects of the meters, which I don't look at at all, like temperature measurements. I don't really look at them. It's not something I use, so I'm only looking at what I'm actually using. So, yeah. I'm happy to prostitute myself for free stuff. Yes, well. <laughs> I'll prostitute myself for free stuff as long as it's relevant to electronics or something I'm trying to achieve. You know, that's. I won't do it for anything which is completely relevant. Um, yeah. Oh, there's Patreon link. Thanks, Johnny. Uh, put my amp probe of Dana here. Dana here. Uh, okay. Um. What flukes? Do we want to give it away? I mean, I don't want to jinx it by saying these are coming and then something happens and then they don't come. You know, I've, I've already have kind of jinxed it by saying it at all until they've actually arrived. I, I prefer to wait till I've actually got it in my hands before I announce it. Um, but I'm quite excited by it. Obviously, that's why I've said it. But uh, the meters, I think it was the 107, 117 and I think it was 175 I think it was the other one so it's a couple of the cheaper meters and this one of the slightly better ones how long have I been a JavaScript programmer is that I guess you're referencing me are you um, not that well I've tinkered with JavaScript for uh, uh, 20 years, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, uh, I built my first website in 97. Yeah, 97, 96, 97, so I did my first website. I think it's 97. Um, and I've been doing it ever since and getting gradually more complicated but I'm not like mainstream stuff I just do stuff to suit things I need so there's lots of stuff out there I've got no clue about um, or things I just don't really have much exposure to because I just don't do that so I just code what I need to do I need to finish AWS section of the guide you're writing oh dear AWS hmm Again, some I've never touched, so no idea. <laughs> so I'll do obviously HTML, everyone does that. A bit of CSS, obviously, JavaScript, um, PHP, MySQL. Um, Ajax, which is obviously a combination of you know JavaScript and PHP backend. That kind of stuff. I used to use Dreamweaver. I did have issues with it being a bit buggy, so in the very early days, but I actually found I prefer to hand code rather than use Dreamweaver's code. Um, I just found it just it could be a bit quirky sometimes. It add in stuff you didn't want or take out stuff you wanted in there. So I ended up just not using it in the end. Um, so I've always hand coded, I've always written code by hand. I've never used any like GUI interfaces really since Dreamweaver. I tried it and didn't like it in the end basically. I used it for a while. I probably used Dreamweaver for a couple of years. Then I realised that nah, this isn't actually much benefit to me. I'd rather just hand code. Anyway. Uh, what do you mean value me? Why don't I link my Patreons? I'll link my Patreon, you mean. Um, I think... Hold on. Uh, didn't Johnny just do that? Skull, you bugger. I'm sure Johnny just did that just now. Yeah, he did. 
up here. You stream before you got bored websites, yeah. Dreamy was easy. Yeah, Dreamy was easy. It was, it was it was a nice system, but I found it too restrictive, and I just didn't like some of the bugs that showed up. I mean, maybe I don't know if it's even stood around, is it for that? I don't know, but I'll just, I'll just do it by hand now. Right, let's get back to this thing. So you're sitting here waffling. Let's close this window off and let's see what we get. Good current viewers, currently 35 people watching right now. Awesome. 36 even, even better. Right, let's get to this thing. Disc, wide. What should we do? Uh, yeah, yeah, let's do that. No, it's too HDMI. Let's do that one. I'll even need to chat this time, as you can see it this time. Yeah, we're keeping your suspense for ages. <laughs> right. Right, moment of truth. Let's power this beastie up and see if it works. If I've got any new faults, it could be that's just the beginning of the faults. It could be other RAM chips which are also bad. Um, We'll have to power it up and find out. I'm a bit nervous about this because you know you never quite know what's going to happen. Actually, I might lift this up very slightly in case there's any magic smoke. You never know. Let's do it this way. Right. You ready? I'm not sure I am. Push the button. Oh, it beeps. System error. Error code 1100. What have we got further? Fix something. Hmm. Test my press preset to clear. Curious. That's what we're getting. Now to find out what this 1100 is. Hmm. So it says press preset to clear. Okay, where's the preset button? I wish you'd look at the front of this thing. There it is down the bottom. Power up. Front end programming error detected. Okay, but it is at least powered up. Obviously not working. Hmm. Getting somewhere. One one zero zero. Oh, it's got like a mesh in the screen. It's not actually dirty. I've already pulled that apart and cleaned it all. There's actually no dust in there. It's, it's clean now. Um, it's got like a mesh right through the screen there, so it's actually like a shielding, so which gives it a 
bit of a weird effect. So yeah, I fixed the RAM. Yes, indeed. <laughs> Fred, me, Moji, Jane. <laughs> oh dear. Fred's a moderator too. Right, so you need to look up this other era code. Let's try and figure out what it is. So, so now we've got through that step. We shall scroll down, find the next step, which might list it. Here we go, 1100 is shown right here. Okay. Digital filter or input section return code. Right, it's 1100. So then we have to do this process. But it can be cool, so can you read that there or not? It might be a bit small still. So A10, A15, or A20 assemblies, but maybe caused by the RAM bus or arbitrator. So A10, A15 in the input section. Um, A10 is the actual, I think, the input amplifier, and that's like a analog to digital, I think that's how it was. Okay, so we moved A20. Oh, again. Um, A30 assembly on an extender card, which I'm going to have to solder up. I've gone into that. Short pins of AW30W100 together, so it's the test pads or test points. So I'd link them together. Move the test jumpers on the A40 board. Now we're assuming, of course, those test jumpers are already in the right places. They might be in the wrong place because someone's been playing with this. It could actually be already in a test mode. I oh, know it's still sealed up when I got it, wasn't it? So when I got it, it was sealed. So that won't be the case then. I don't think. It appeared to still be sealed. It had a seal on it. Maybe it's just stuck down again really well. <laughs> Um, so it gives you a list of potential parts. Now, wasn't there a part on the A40 board which had been replaced? I mean, that one which I resoldered. Remember that? Um... Did you feel it was the ASIC? Yeah, it could be. Um, um, right. So, did we go through this process or not? So I think we should start doing some of this and see if we get any of these going on here. Let me read about this a bit more first. Make sure we can head around it. There's another code. No, it's just that 1100 or 1100 code. So I need to get up the extender card. So why do I need to actually have the extender card on it if I'm link two pins together?
Hmm. Joey, you missed it. Oh no. <laughs> Last error was eleven hundred. Right, is this the next stage? Let's just look at this a bit more. Okay. So let's do another boot up, alright, just in case maybe it's cleared it. Yeah, I probably will do. I've got the um, manual already loaded on the pad. So I can do that. Is it 1100 or 1100, which is a different code? Is it? Surely not. Let's pair it up again. I was thinking if I do a second power up, maybe it will change the code. Maybe it sort of clears itself after the first boot up or something. That's everything that's secured to me. Yeah, okay, it's 1100, zero, zero, so it is two separate ones with 00. zero. But as there's no signal showing on the screen as well. It says front end programming error detected. What that means? Does that mean it's got a RAM issue? Uh, a RAM issue, a ROM issue? I was thinking now. Now it's also got an, the, on the range on the bottom there, it's got a red indicator on. Let me show you this. Let's change camera views. Let's give it the chat so as you can't see them. If you look down here, so we also have over here we've got this red indicator for over. Now that may indicate there's a problem with the input card. I may guess here. I mean I've tried changing the switch over, it didn't help. Input doesn't seem to matter. Range doesn't seem to matter. So it's auto range but also over. So it may be an indicator of faults as well. So there is actually that chart which shows the front panel indicator really these. So that being on might be an indication as well. But with nothing on the display here. You'd think there'd be something there, like a noise floor or something. And there's nothing there. I don't see like a default button, which would be nice. But um Yes. Recall zero. I don't know. Uh, recall power down, recall state, recall state, illegal file reference. Yeah, I don't use this thing, that's part of the problem too. So, yes. Just trying to cut that code and see what's going on with that.
Um, oh, I'm getting hungry. I think it's time for a snack. Mr. Adam. Input one, circuit one, device address zero zero. I don't know. So. I mean that does match the, the appearance so you got one one double zeros that does match what's on screen so I think we need to do this next Okay, Chris. Hmm. <laughs> Front end programming error occurs when the front end control register circuit setup is read by the processor found to be incorrectly set. Mm -hmm. Interesting. BLT test routine. I guess that comes up and I'll do those jumpers. Signal test points are in six seventeen. That's what needs to be wiser card. Right. It would be nice to put those test points up the top of the car, wouldn't it? Up there. <laughs> yeah, it could be more RAM issues, but that test procedure is a RAM arbitrator, which is what is used to control the RAM address bus, so well, the RAM bus. So, anything that's accessing the RAM, it has three priority levels. What I remember reading, and that then designates which device can talk to the RAM, and it has a priority list. Those things, I can't remember what the list was now. I think FFT was like the first priority, followed by I can't remember. There's two more things anyway. Um, and that RAM arbitrator is what determines what can talk to the RAM. So maybe there's an issue with that, something not switching. Dip switches, possibly. So the RAM module we just replaced was, well, the RAM chip was that one there. So it's, you know, could still be a problem in that board. It could be when that RAM failed, it damaged something else. Or RAM failed as a result of something else going. Okay. 
So we need to get a riser card set up so we can get to those test points. Um, teach your levels. So all those test points should be in a high state when it's in the test mode. Then if it's if those match up, then we'll look at the next stages. Sipping on a beer, nice. Well, the thing we don't know what the history is of this, apart from the fact it came broken. So there could be something else wrong. I mean, we need to check these jumper settings. Maybe there's a jumper which is set, which shouldn't be set. That's possible. I will have to figure out what they're supposed to be set to. That's the problem. Let's have a look. So, the A20 ball, which is referenced a bit. Those are just test links. Those are test links. Still looking for any jumpers, which may or may not be set. Those are all just test links, that's fine. Thirty board. So we got jumpers here, normal and test. Oh, can you see us? Maybe you can't. Those are in normal position, so those are fine. These are test points. W10 jumper, nothing on it. So it looks like it's all in the correct modes. So I think I need to set these riser cards up. I think I need both of them. So that's that one. Yep. And that'll be the yellow one. Yep. So I need to do these riser cards. And then we can try using them. But at least on those two boards it all looks fine and there's nothing there which looks like it's out of place what it should be. I won't push that back in just yet. Let's check the next card. So there's some jumper links on this one at the top here. W4, 1, 2, 3, 4. Um, no indication of what they do. It'll be in the manual, though, won't it? This is on the A40 board. But they look like they're probably supposed to be there. Doesn't say anything on the back of the board either. So I think I need to get these set up and we'll plug them in.
So I've actually got two sets of these now because, well, I will have two sets of these. This set arrives in the country on the 1st of December. Then nothing for weeks. And then on the 31st of December, they're in Australia. It's like, what are you doing over there? <laughs> anyway, they arrived on Friday, I think it was. So they got here eventually, but bloody hell. So what happened is, because we thought we had gone missing, I purchased a second set. I don't want to wait for them because they're going to hold me up. And um, yeah, I was right to do that. Because, but now I'm going to have two sets of these riser cards. But it doesn't necessarily mean it's a bad thing. But this means that I'm going to have two sets. Um, yeah. Anyway, I'm going to change the tip over. I need a bigger tip for this. Recorded video on this. No one wants to see me building a riser cow, did I? I'm sure, you guys don't want to see me doing it either, really. We'll make the camera slightly closer, though. If only I can see the keypad. Yeah. This is probably need flux. And plenty of it, I expect. Chunkier solder for this to help get rid of it, and it's got extra flux in it. Now I'm going to turn this fan on. And I think we're going to add more heat. See if I thought I would have done this yesterday before the live stream to make sure that the live stream wasn't about me soldering up pins onto a riser car. <laughs> well, a pair of riser cards. So that's what, 50 pins and. 22 was it so 94 pins solder I think that's right I've done a couple of these. Something half done. Yeah, so this is a uh, a good step forward anyway, at least we've got the RAM problem, well that initial RAM problem sorted out. I was actually not too worried about that particular fault. But now I'm 
a bit more concerned about this second fault because that sounds a bit more concerning. You know, one fault, okay. Multiple faults, that gets a bit nerve-wracking because it's like, what's going on? Has there been some kind of cascade failure across the whole unit? Now, are there multiple circuits and multiple chips which have been damaged? When the power supply looks okay, apart from one, one power supply that's a bit low, and that was the 24 volt supply. That's sitting down slightly, that's at um, 23.7 instead of between 23.9 and 24.1 so it's out of spec now that could be a clue because of it being loaded down potentially that supply card feeds the well that power supply feeds the A10 board I think it's the A10 that's the powers might have to double check that perhaps one of you guys want to check that um, Pretty sure it supplies the A10 board, 24 volt supply, isolated supply, it's a floating one, it goes to the A10 board I believe, and that is also listed as one of the potential boards with a problem in that error code, so that may not be a coincidence. So that being, you know, a bit low was well, something I'd make a mental note of to make sure that I didn't forget about it mainly, and that. You know, it's a potential clue about what's going on, and that seems to be linked. I wonder if I should do something with that A10 board. And that's the very first one, which has got the little coax cable going in the end of it, or the side of it, through a SMB connector. Halfway. One day the flats will run out. <laughs> this seems to keep on going. It's incredible. I've had this thing for about four years. And it still works, even though it's expired. When did it expire? 2019. Was it 19? Or was it 16? I've done bloody know. Manufacture date. December 2015. <laughs> so some of you have probably seen Bit Looney's got this thing where the chat will read out, read the chat out. I thought that's pretty cool. That'd be really handy right now because I can actually still communicate with you all at the same time as I'm doing this. Although the other thing I could actually do is I could bring the tablet over here and put the tablet here with the, the um, live stream running and actually look at the chat through that. That's a possibility. I should have thought about that earlier on. It's not particularly exciting, but it's the next stage, which is going to reveal what's going on next, isn't it? What's the next thing we need to deal with? So I should also do on these riser cards is make sure there's no shorts between any connections. Because these are milled cards, it's just like a copper clad ball which has been milled to make slots in it. So if there's any stray bits of copper floating around, it could cause a problem. So I need to make sure I test all these before I actually do that shouldn't take long I, although I think one of the very first cards I got had some stray bits on it wasn't much just had to give it basically a brush and it's fine but, um, just paste to make sure it's alright
So I really should read up more about that 1100 error because I did see that mentioned in the diagnostic stuff. I might have to go back a bit to one of the other pages. I think it was about page, what's it, section 6 anyway. It's in section 6, early on in section 6. Um, I'd like to read more about that before I just go straight into troubleshooting, actually. Because right now I'm just blindly following it, I'd rather actually understand a little bit about what's going on. And what I actually might do is look at the physical manual for this, because it's just easier to read the physical manual. Too worried about getting this clean. But, uh, pretty jumpy, big junky, junky, junky connections. So I'm not too worried about it being a bit of flux on them. As long as they're basically clean. So the guy which sells these things on eBay is actually been really helpful. He's you know he's seems like a genuine guy. So I don't have any problem buying things from him for this. Been no problems in the past with buying these bought from him. these shorts. And I'll come back and check the chat. This means it's a bit slow for my liking. It's not the fastest one for doing this. Well, I check. Yep, yeah, my soldering. It was a bit of a bridge across there. I think I had a. Yeah, there's a little bit of copper up there. There's a little bit of copper edge on that very end there. A few of them. Right, this one I to check them. Oh. Mm. Yeah, it's not there too. Okay. There's a little bit of a copper edge right along that very top. I'm just see some little flakes, but it's not quite milled right to the very edge there. So I've just missed a tiny little bit. A tiny little strip of copper. And obviously when I've soldered it's probably made it worse because I've put some solder on it at the same time.
see a little bit just there. It's like it's on the edge of the board or something. Just a tiny little whisker right along the edge of that ball. It's almost like it's like a ball end which is wrapped around slightly or something. Let's do this side again as well. I'm just trying to with that. That's all I'm going to check because there's a potential to have, have that happen when you've got a milled ball. again in a second. Good, yeah. I might scrub this one some more. Yeah, I see a little bit on this one as well, actually. A tiny little bit that's in there. Let's try and get those out and I'll scrub it again. Probably shouldn't use a nice test probe for this, but it's convenient because it's just the right size. This side's looking better. Yeah, no, it doesn't make for a good video, I'm afraid. It's not the most exciting thing to have in a live stream. Sorry about that.
This is what I test them, just to be sure. Sounds good. That's good as well. Right, so we. Okay. That's why the card's sorted out. So we have to be able to sort one. Oh, this is all sticky. <laughs> Go back and check the chat. It's been a while. Okay. Uh, right, where are we? What time is it since I was. Uh, I don't know, it's been a while. Um. I'm thrilled the bits for the Jabe. Yes, the Jabe's been really good actually. I really like it. Now the KSGR, KSGR, yeah, that's the one I was using before, and that was pretty good. That was an upgrade from what I had previously, and this Jabe is an upgrade again. It's certainly a lot more powerful. I've been really happy with it so far. And you know, based on the fact it's all like a knockoff, the build quality is excellent. Um, there's one thing I didn't like about it and that's on the back panel there, the power switch they had it wired up backwards so it's always on uh, the, the actual neon on it was always on, whether it's on or off so I had to swap the wire around and that fixed that um, it's like a bit of a construction issue but the rest of it looks really solid um, You're not too worried about the um, rest of the board. I mean, it's not shorted out. That's what I'm really worried about. I mean, I'll, I'll do it later on. I'll go about it now. Um, I'm going to need a night fix. The rest after this fix. Yeah, definitely. Um... Well, the guys on eBay, if you want riser cards, um, just do a search on eBay. There's, I think there's only one guy that's got them. It's him. <laughs> um, what was his name? John. Yeah, John was his name. Anyway, um, I can't remember what his username is on eBay, but just do a search for riser cards, and they're there. You see that there's basically these copper clad balls which have been um, milled, been milled to make the traces, so. You make some order as well, I think. You can just tell him what you need exactly, what dimensions, he will make them for you. Um, then once he's got that design, he can sell them himself as well. So so far, I've just been buying ones he's already done. I've got a few different ones for him. So, All right, let's get this thing back on the bench. I think I've got to turn it around the other way. Yeah, I'm going to have to have face away from the camera. That's a bit inconvenient. Otherwise, I can't see the test points. Now. A bit of 
of space. So, do I need to do something with those riser cards so I don't touch anything, like has been mentioned? Potentially. Yeah, it's going to be something in there. It's going to be something in there, some kind of padding. First things first, see if they can go in. Yeah, that's good. That one's in there. So it can go in. This one actually sort of pulled it this way, sitting against this block on the plastic. So I think that one be okay. It does kind of need something on there to pad it out. So it's not wobbling off the connectors. I don't really like it wobbling off the connectors. Um, yeah, I think I need to do something. But it might depend on which slot you put these into, because some of these slots are narrower than others, and they may not then fit if you put some foam on them. Mm. These balls also very really slightly twisted, there's a bit of warping these. I guess it's because they're in postage for so long. <laughs> They've been squashed a bit or something and twisted them. You know. Let's try and slot this thing in. Go on, you go. Cooperate. There we go. All right, it's in. So how's that thing? This side's okay. It's not going to touch anything. As long as I'm not pushing on the ball when I'm probing it, probably be alright. Okay. That's manageable. Spark, yeah, that's the one. That's the guy. Thanks, David. So that's the guy who makes the wiser cards. Pepper around the breeze, certainly. Getting spuddy. What, what are these spam bots even trying to communicate? Vin, FYI. I mean, what is that? <laughs> just always report them when you get the spam bots. Just report them. Just do a report. Helps hopefully get YouTube to improve their systems and minimise them. Well, the... Um, Test procedure for this does save use of riser cards, so I guess it expects it. It's fine. Hey, make eyes again. Okay. Remove the dot. Right. Okay. Yeah, anyway. Um, what do we need to do here? So, move the A20 assembly. 
So let's take the 820 assembly out. Let's get this uh, Harley plug back in again so it's grounded again. Should we do that? Remove the A20 assembly. see short the two pins of A30 W10 to gear W100 together which is that top edge one isn't it yeah so I need to get a jumper pin for that Probably can't see. Yeah. Move the A40 assembly W1 and W3 to the test positions. A40 assembly W1, W3, which are over there. Which now I've got this board in the way, I can't see. <laughs> hold it with my finger. Right. W1, W3. Right, that's those two there. So move this one. Just don't drop it. This card's in the bloody way now, isn't it? Let's take this out, it'll be easier. Those right instead of assuming I'll just swap them. So, as per this, let's go to yeah, here we go. So, this one following right now is this bit. Uh, so, 16, 16, oh. which is this really highly detailed bit just here. I might actually look at a physical manual for that, but yeah, I'd say it's just moving from left to right. Okay, let me get this. In the actual physical manual, so I can see it more clearly. Uh, this is further on. sure that what I'm seeing is right. So we're doing test E now. And yep, test is definitely right hand pens, that's okay. Pretty hard to see. It's not much better than what's on the screen, to be honest. Yeah, so test is right hand side, left hand side is normal. Okay, so I want to make sure it's definitely correct in case there's someone else been missing with it. Okay. Seems I have a physical manual here now, I'll have a look at that. Put 
turn it back in again. So I've got to power it up again, check for the signal or the picture on the screen. Same BLT touch routine. And then check the signals at those points. Um, does it say what the ground point is? That's interesting. I'll show you what I just noticed. Yeah, don't smoke yet. Yeah, it smokes between the ears, yeah, still escaping. So here, this image here. There's the blocks, and that looks like it says test on the right hand side there, right? So test that side, test is on that side, and test is on this side, all right? So it looks like the jumper should be on the right hand side of these connectors for the test mode. But when I come over here, it says the opposite. Well, that's interesting, isn't it? Here at 100 incorrect user detected. Oh dear. <laughs> yes, it certainly is true, though. Right. So now I'm thrown by this because they got this specifically in here, but it says the opposite of what this says. Oh. No, the ball's got no marking on it. It would be nice if it said that. It just says the placements. I'll double check in case I missed it, but I didn't see it. Yeah, there's nothing there. At least I found the ground terminal. Not a ground terminal. No, I don't know. I'm going to put them in there because it could have been mislabeling on the circuit. I'm going to base it off the board layout and assuming that they're in a run normal run position to start with. There's a ground point there. Anything down here? TBs. Test point, test point, test point. Nah. So there's ground up here. There's a ground there. I'm going for a ground being close around here, but there's one there. Because I obviously need to measure these to see what they're doing. I might do this in two stages. Might first power up to show the screen and see what the screen does with catch on camera. And then I'll flip it back around and we'll do the test points. I think that's a uh, better way of doing this. Let's move this out of the way. And you can't see what the hell I'm talking about because I'm on the wrong screen again. <laughs> uh. Looking down from the top of the board, you reckon?
I suppose so. Yes, actually you're right. That's a good point. If you're looking from the other side, as if they're sticking straight out. Yeah. So if you're behind the ball, so it's the opposite side. Yeah, that, that would make sense then. Yeah. It's not very clear, is it? Anyway, okay. That does at least allow for an explanation. So I need to power this up. I'm going to flip it around. We'll power it up. Check for this on the screen. As long as that comes up, we should be good. Then I'll check all these signals here and see what we get. And I'll record that. I'll flip it around and back and forth a couple of times. Right. Let's go to power the camera up. Focused, ish. You see the mesh in there? There you go. You probably see that really fine mesh that's in there. It's interesting. Right, so what I've done now is I've put the riser card in here, or riser cards. I've extended off the board, uh, A30 board. I've removed the A20 board because I'm going through that diagnosis process for the next stage for that 1100 error. So I've set this up, I've set the jumpers, that sort of stuff. So I'm just going to power it up first, check the screen, see what comes up. If that comes up successfully, then I'll spin it around and we'll do the testing on the card and check the test points. See if we get any more bangs with this one. That's not annoying at all. <laughs> well, we've got the right display. Sorry, everyone. This is going to sound awful. <laughs> wow. Well, okay. Ugh, okay, I'll, I'll turn this back on again in a second. <laughs> Let's get set up first. Ah, dear. Wow, that was kind of irritating.
So you've got test points. There, 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 there. So you've got one, two, three, four, five, six. Is that right? Two, four, six, seven. Where's that one? One, two, three, four, five, six. Is that there? Seven? Six, oh, three? I'm missing one. Uh, hold on, let's look. Let's try and figure these out first before I get onto that. So, I'll start on the right hand side. Something there. 70 something. DF2BR. I need the tablet. Right, we're in volume one. On page 221. Uh, view. Go to page 221. Yeah. Come on, it must go bigger than that, surely. Really? Really? You're not going to rotate either. Right, well, it's big enough for me to read it. It's obviously a settings problem, we've got to get settings sorted out. Okay. So you want. DF2 BR, is that one? It's DB705, okay, that makes sense. DF3 BR, DB704, yep. 703 is PBG. Doesn't say that, but okay. That may not be it. Seven oh one DF two BG. So I'm not sure about seven oh three, it might be something else. T B seven oh two. Now I'm confusing myself because I can go off I need to go through the list instead, find the other way, it's not working right. So FFTBR is U707 pin 3, it looks like. U707 pin 3. So it looks like I don't have a specific test point for that one. Then we got TP704, which is that one. We've got 705, which is that one. U707 pin 8. How many pins has this thing got? 8. So 18 pins, 2, 20 pin, 2, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 20 pin. So that's that pin there. Yeah, so it's DF1BR, smart test. But nothing on the board, so I'm going to go to the IC pin, which means I might need to change this probe so I can get any of that slipping. Um, then we want TP700, which is there, then TP701, which is there. And TP702, which is there. Okay, right. So yeah, it's all there. TP703, I know what it is. I wonder if that's a ground for it. Right, let's start recording this. <coughs> I 
I'll check check for a bit. Something's wrong with the GUI, the fucking GUI is, mich is glitching, yes it is. Tape up the buzzer, I don't know what a buzzer is. <laughs> it's probably inside the front panel or something, I don't know. Yeah. Oh. Right, let's go and try this. This is going to be noisy. Right, I'm set up here to do this testing. I've got a ground clip on. I'll figure out what the test points are. So I'm just going to go through. I've got the tablet here in front of me with the test points listed on. So I'm just going to go through them in the order as listed on here so I don't lose myself. A couple of these are on IC pins. We've got an IC pin here, which is pin number three of this one here, and pin number eight, which is there. So we'll probe into those two pins as well. So we'll have a pointy probe. Right, let's get onto it. It's going to be noisy. Sorry. Four volts, interesting. Seven oh four. This one here. That's got five volts. Seven oh five. It's got 5 volts, 7 on 7 pin 8, it's got 5 volts, it's not near as interesting, why is it only 3 volts, uh, 4 volts, why is that, uh, 700 is here, 4.5 volts, 701 4.5 volts 702 4.5 volts oh my god <laughs> I think that beeper is supposed to be going off because all the front panel is all flashing so it's called the BLT blinking light test so I think it is supposed to be doing that as irritating as it is <laughs> So, pin 3 of U707 was only 4 volts. Pin 8 was 4.5, wasn't it? Is it 700 and 702? Was it? Was 4.5 volts as well, tonight? So, the 4 volt ones I'm a little bit concerned about. 4.5 less so. I would have thought 4 volts would be a bit strange. Um, I wonder if there's a waveform in there. If there's a waveform, I might explain it. Okay. Um. Pin eight was five volts. Thanks. I mean, that's the reason I record this stuff because then. I can actually review it and actually make sure I don't miss something or yeah so okay so they are it says TTL state high well they'll achieve that was it TTL is what three and a half volts or something like that three volts I don't bloody know <laughs> it's high so it's close to five volts so I think it's probably fine in that way um, so this is the next test here It's on a bit more, doesn't it? Hmm. 
Yeah, so they all meet the standard, which is a high level. I just would have thought it would be higher than 4 volts, though. I mean, yeah, it's it's a high signal, but... Is it right? You know? I thought it would be higher than that. But if it's a waveform on that pen, maybe it's switching rapidly, and that could explain why it's a low level, because maybe it's got a signal on it. It's not just a high state. Um, that could be why. Um, anyway, so that is fine. Use clip lead to short DF3BR to ground. A30 TP704. Alright, clip leads. Clip lead. 704. Make sure I get this right. Uh, DF3BR 704, which is that one there. And here's the ground. Um, So I need to get a scope going. I need to clip this on the ground point. I guess I'll have to go to the chassis and hope for the best. Just to check on TP700, which is this one here. Yeah, I know I've got to change my live stream setup yet. Just give me a minute. Same goes, professional YouTuber. <laughs> right. Okay. Let's do this one here. Here we go. Okay. I didn't know you were there. Hello and goodbye. Binocli, how's it going? Two is high state, is it? Okay, cool. Thanks for that, David. I don't even know that stuff. I just know it's, you know, I just say more than half of the voltage is, or half, more than half the supply rail is high. That's what I generally use. So, that's fine. I mean, being borderline make me concerned. But... So, let's see. Let's try and get this in shot. So the next stage is to clip this test point TP704 to ground and to probe on TP700 and check for a certain waveform. So I'm set up here, I've got, a, I've got no idea what's going to come out like on the scope, we'll have to sort it out. This is kind of doing slower positions because I was last night using it, it's running slow. Um, So I have to get this finished. I have to finish getting this set up, and then we'll come back, and I'll show you what I find. Um, was it say waveform was in what? Six seventeen waveform. Where's the waveform six seventeen? Oh, there it is over there. All right, six eighteen, not six seventeen. I'll read the wrong bit. Six eighteen, yes. Oh, bloody hell. Okay. Um, 10 to 1 probing, yep. So 
so we should be on two millivolts of division. 100 nanoseconds of division. So 200 or 100? Is it 100, isn't it? 100, yep. Yeah. With 200 millivolts peak to peak, uh, 200 millivolts division, yeah. So no bandwidth limit. DC coupling. Yep. So it lists three connections. Should I be probing three signals at once? I can't, I can't do that. I oh, then mentioned removing the short and changing it. Okay, so it's just referencing each one individually. So I can't test them all at the same time. It has to be individual. Okay, that's fine. You know what I can do is differently for you. Uh, I'll catch up anyway. I'll do it this way. I could just give you guys an on-screen view. Why is that? What I do this why is always in the way. <laughs> Okay. Let's move this meter probe out of the way since it's ground. Turn it off now. And it's still in the same test mode, so it's probably going to make a racket. Okay. So here we are, set up. Let's see what happens. I'm going to turn this on. It's probably going to make a racket again, I'm guessing. Here's the waveform. Okay, what are we getting there? Two divisions and three divisions. That is looking just about perfect actually. Yeah. Yeah, let's do that so we can look at it at the same time without having put up with the noise. So, there's that and there is I you can see the waveform on the tablet next to it, which is basically correct. So it looks basically correct. So that it's even got this little down spike there below ground as initial power spike. So that's not the words I'm looking for, is it? But anyway, the waveform looks correct. It looks very close to what's in the manual, actually. It's actually surprisingly close. It's probably one of the closest ones I've seen. So that looks good. Next one. So I can use the mouse to control it. It's a bit easier. So I've got a mouse now. Um, so now I can do triggering with this. Uh, trigger. There. So I can do triggering. Right. So the next one is, looks like it should basically be the same waveform. So it says take a short from that one and stick it instead to diff 2BR, so TP705 instead. And measure um, TP seven oh one. 
Well, I've now changed over to move the short onto TP705, and I'm now probing on TP701 instead. Let's try this. Oh, it's triggered already. Don't want that. Well, that looks the same anyway. That's fine. I'm not going to wait for it to start beeping. That looks the same. That looks good. Next one is... Moving a short off that. Uh, move the short, is it? No, it's correct. Move the short from that one and put it onto. How am I supposed to put this on the IC pin? Seriously. <laughs> oh man. Did they really think that through? Right. Why isn't there a pin there? Okay, I'm trying to find myself a grab I can use, hold on. Why on earth didn't I do a bloody pin for that one? I don't know what Is going to ground. No, no, nice test one. Oh, well, grounding is. Uh, is that right? Grounding. Yeah, so we'll ground that pin. Done. And then. 702. Waveform at 702. Okay, I'm going to change the setup. I'm going to put a little grabber on the IC707 pin 8 to ground that pin out as per the instructions. I'm just reading it again just to make sure I haven't done something silly. So, use 707 pin 8 to ground, yep. And then measuring at TP702 for the waveform again. So let's do this. It's there. It looks the same. Wait for it to start beeping on this one. In case something changes. That's fine. Uh, what's the next one? Oh, this is interesting. Now, I'll be turning this thing on and off in between each of these steps. The instructions actually don't say to do that. It said to turn it on, have the test on, then go through do all those steps, and then turn it on and then do some other tests. I wonder if it's doing some kind of state change somewhere. I wonder if I actually need to do that again and actually make sure I do it in sequence with the power on. Hmm, interesting. Is it just checking waveforms or is it actually doing something as well? It's curious. Yes, because it says about doing all these, but it doesn't say about turning the power off in between each one. And I was doing it for safety reasons, to make sure that I accidentally short something out, which I shouldn't be shorting out. Hmm. I 
What do I think about the 2104X? You have the 1104X. Um, is mine 1204? Hold on. Yeah, okay. I'm not, I, mean, I think I have reviewed that one. I mean, they're all much the same. The signal and scopes all got the same GUI, basically, all work the same way. Some might have some extra features compared to others, but generally they're all much the same. Um, I'm using a 2000X Plus, which I won from Siglant last year. They're doing their giveaways, and I managed to win one, which is great. Um, that's what I'm using there, is that thing. Anyway, it's can't be in the chat. I'm getting distracted. Um, Do I save the live streams? Yes, I do. They're automatically saved on the channel. So anyone can come back and view them later on. I do get quite a few views. Sometimes it's, you know, I'll get hundreds of views later on. People sit down and, well, I don't know how much I actually watch. I might watch the first two minutes and disappear. I don't know, but. Um, uh, what am I missing here? Okay. 104 XE. So, 104 XE is a good little scope. Um, they are hackable. I I've got 104 XE. I purchased that one early last year. I think it was late year before. I can't remember. But I've had that one about a year or so. Um, and that is hackable. Mine's a now 1204XE instead. Ask for the guy in Kenya, want him to go to sleep, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, Siglin make nice scopes. They're, they're certainly a lot better than some of the other entry level kind of scopes, like the, um, like the Hantex and stuff like that. They're actually, I believe they're better. Hantech must haul and what's the other one I've done? I've done another one. Another brand. Can't think of what it is. I've done a few multimeter reviews. Multimeter reviews. I've done a few oscilloscope reviews. This I do on my channel. Look for oscilloscope reviews on my channel and you'll see them. Um, and it includes not only the, the budget entry level ones, but also the slightly better ones which are Siglant as well. So um, but a 104 is a good scope. If it, you, know, you could get a 102 and save yourself a little bit of money, but a 104 is actually slightly better. So, apart from just the two channels, I think it's actually a slightly better system as well. Um, I don't think 104 has got the web interface on it though. Like the 2000X Plus I'm using now has got web interface on it. Um, I think the 2000X might have it as well. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I have to check that. But if you've got a web interface, it's good because if you're doing like I'm doing here, you can actually go to a web page which is hosted on the oscilloscope and view the waveforms and control it from your computer, which is convenient. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. Um, I think I need to do that process again, but have the unit on the whole time. Why would it tell you to leave it on the whole time? I'm wondering if it puts into a certain state. Maybe that's saying memories or something. Could just be an oversight. I could think it's safe to do it one after the other, turn the thing on and off. Maybe I'll do this next stage and see what happens. Put it all back to how it was and then do this. I could just be being paranoid. 
Maybe I did it as a shortcut. The 1104 to 1204 XE um, upgrade, it's a software thing. Yeah, I think it's just fast. I'm thinking that because it's just RAM, isn't it? So it's not like it's stored in between power cycles. I think the main thing there is just to get the waveforms. So yeah, I think I'll just move on. I'll put it all back. I'll go to the next stage, which is um, step nine. Put it all back together again. So what's this next test actually trying to do? Right. So the hack for the oscilloscope is on the EV book forum. If you look for the SDS on 104XE, do a search for that, you will find there is a hack thread which tells you how to do it. It's easy. It wasn't much effort at all. Okay, Kimmy, catch you later. So, right. Let's put this thing back together again. I'm still going to need a waveform, so I'm going to leave the scope on. We'll take the grounding clip off. I'll just change views back to over here so you can see what I'm doing. This little clip that I used, this little thing here, you go to the IC, handy little grabbers. Sorts of things you need when you need them, and you don't need them very often, generally. But when you need them, you need them. So, I've got lots of things here which I basically purchased on the off chance I'll need them, and then one day it happens, and today is that day. <laughs> oh, I think I'm going to use those little. Grabbers a couple of times, I don't use them very often at all. Right, um, so I've got to put the jumpers and stuff back. That's what it said, isn't it? Section 9. Put those jumpers back to the run positions. Move the clip lead from A30J100. I didn't put a clip lead on there. <laughs> I think it means a jumper. Move the clip leaf and jump at A30J100. Well, it's for a start it's called W100, and it's just there. Okay. Yeah, weird. Okay, right, next thing. So I should be able to turn this on again now. The set controls a certain way, which is great because I've got to try and figure out how to set these controls. Preset test select, define test none, 21, enter, mode, whole bunch of dots, start, cont, TST. Um, and also I'll check for signal on 601 which is here yeah 
and the waveform for that is 20 microseconds resolution. Hundred millivolts for the vision still, so it's the same. Okay. This is keypad stuff. Set the controls. That's the bit I'm not sure of because I'm not that familiar with the controls on this thing yet because I haven't actually used it. Spin it around a bit. If I can. A good thing on my desk the is. Right. So I'm looking for let's figure out these controls for doing that. So preset I know what that is. Um, test select. Was that one of the options down the side that comes up? I think it might have been. So I think it's, well, I think it's one of the, op the option keys down the side. Then test number. So 121. Enter was the enter button. Okay, I don't see an enter button. This is on the screen, maybe it's on the screen, we've got a return, but I don't think it's the same thing. Uh, was it enter mode? Because it's wrapping around. Maybe it's all on screen stuff. There's mode up here. Start, which is there. TST. It's probably on screen as well. Okay, guess we'll have to just do it and see what happens. Let's adjust the camera so I'm record the right thing, which just shut itself off. Must have known I was about to use it. For this, I'll check the chat again in case I'm missing something because you guys might be yelling at me. Call me an idiot or something. Alright. How's the repair going? Well, you're here for the RAM success, weren't you? So, do, yeah, you haven't got any further than that yet. Casio FX 975 can be made into a 985 by flashing. Okay. Bloody thing scrolling rubbish. I might just use a scroll bar. Maybe that. No. It will work. Here we go. Make everyone dizzy. Okay, let's go back to HDMI. Yeah, it's been a long stream already. So when I get past this stage.
Right, so now we're on the next test, which is test 10. So I've reinstalled all the, put the jumpers back to normal running conditions, that sort of stuff, taking the links out. I've got the oscilloscope hooked up still, which I'll need to check in a minute. Now and this says to run a control routine on here. So I've got to go through, put some commands in. Hopefully I can figure those out because it's not particularly clear because I'm not used to this unit yet. I haven't used it at all. So I've got to try and figure out where everything is. So let's power it up. That's not right, is it? It's glitching. Okay, what's wrong? What have I missed? I don't think I've missed anything. I'm supposed to leave that card out. It's not go. That's a twenty card doesn't go back in yet. Hmm. What's going on? Isn't it? Yeah, that's the last one I pulled out. Not sure it is CD properly actually. Let's just do this one again. Now it feels CT properly. Let's try again. Let's try it again. I just reseated that uh, A40 card. I think it wasn't quite right down. That's better. Okay, back to where we were. That's what it was. So, so we have to do preset. It's got free running. Clicking over here, it's doing something. Um, test select. Okay. Define test number. Define no. I don't know what it says. What is controls? This glitching is interesting. Where's test select? I'm going to come back. Where the hell is it? Pause it. No. What we're we missing, guys? Come on. Where's defined test number? 
I've got to find divine test number. I'd be happy with that. Don't know. Must be, maybe it's an instruction in here somewhere saying how to do a test sequence. There must be an instruction saying how to do a test sequence. I bet that's what it is. I did see something, but I don't remember where it was. <sighs> no, don't put the 20 ball back in again until after I've done that. Um. Nice test should be on the writer cards. So it says preset test select. So there, this is what I'm seeing here. It says. I'm assuming I'm going left to right and not up and down. It's not like preset mode. Test select defined start test cont num <laughs> test one two one enter. Is it <laughs> surely it's not done that way? Yeah, there wasn't defines, but they were they were defining the um, CRT setup for the actual measurement of the unit, you know. Um, this is a test sequence. I need to find this test sequence thing. Hold on. Let me sort this out. Let's move this card over here. It doesn't fall off. Test sequences. Let's find that in the manual here. I'm sure it said it in here. I remember seeing something about test sequences. Just bear with me. Which one of you guys can find it? I don't know. I did read something about doing special tests. Thought we're trying to skim through, trying to find something. There's some power supply stuff. I might have to go from the bloody beginning. I don't know, I can't find it now. Uh, anyone found it yet? It's right across. Yeah, that's what I thought. I'd be surprised if it's vertical, like blocks. Like, I've seen stuff like that before, which is why I was thinking of it. Um, Preset test select define. Is it just a test button? Is it? I'm not, I'm not looking too much. I'm looking for too much information in one go. I didn't see test anywhere. Find. Um, just look for define test num. See if we can find it. Found that one. Maybe they'll tell me somewhere how to do it. <laughs> yeah, preset mode. Look, see preset mode, then test select. See that? 
That's a different view. Same again here, it's just preset, then mode. That's what's missing. That's what I need to do. Okay, right. What page was I on? <laughs> uh, it's a test these, so it's backwards. Let's go back. Here, right. I think it should be preset mode, then these. David, well done. I think that's what I just discovered. Yeah, thanks Dave for dropping by. Catch you later. Let's go back to um, here. Because I'm in the wrong app, it won't let me switch on the keyboard thing. Preset. So it's up. So preset mode. Test select. Here we go. Right. That's got it. So figure it out. The manual wasn't very clear. It looked like it was in a different sequence, but actually was. I did a search for one of the, the bits of text in that, and it actually looked like a different format somewhere else. So the preset to obviously goes back to preset condition mode. Down the bottom here, you've got test select, and we need to do define test none. We need to do one two one, and then enter. Okay, you have a waveform on the scope. Is that what I'm supposed to get? Then we got. Start continuous test that one there. That looks like what's what I needed. Yeah, the formatting on this is awful. So you can see here, hopefully, that really did not look what I pushed. It's supposed to be preset, then mode, then test select, find test number, that, then that. Then that, then that, then that. It's like, no. <laughs> no, well, we got there. And scope. Here's the scope view. Let's just see if that looks like what it's supposed to look like. Um, it pretty much does, yes. We've got three downward spikes and a bunch of noise. And that's what's on there. I'll show you better. See? That's what it shows. So that appears to be correct. Yep, that seems to match. Voltage levels look about right. It's just above the second division. So yeah, that's all fine. That looks right. Damn it. <laughs> Okay, what's next? So, stop to abort, let's stop that one, stop test. 
Don't want to get it halfway through. Right. Preset, bring it back. Yep. Exit the test modes. Right. Top screen. Um, that says put it back together again. <laughs> All tests are good. That's interesting. So, oh, going in. So we check that signal there. That matched. Turn the power off, put A20 ball back in again, and take A30 back off the jumpers, or the extenders. Pass says all the signals are correct. Hmm. Test D continued. To be continued, it would seem. Um, what is after that? More keyboard diagnostics. No, no, how to do it? We can do it. It's good. <laughs> oh dear. So it was our self-test routines. Okay. Right. We'll do this then. Shouldn't take long to this next stage. Get closer so you can read it. So I need to do this bit next. Well, this is already test D. It's just already test D is this whole process of this particular setup, you know. So. Take the scope probe off. Lift this thing back off the risers. Glad those riser cars arrived. Refit the other board. Set up again, and it's all moved. Oh. Leave the scope on for now, who knows, I won't need it again yet. I do need a drink. I'm just gonna go and grab myself a sort of drink, I'll come back. I was going to go and pick one up and come back with it. Give me a second. Well, maybe 20 seconds. No, it's not a beer, it's a apple and cranberry juice. Okay, next test. Let's scroll down on the tablet. This tablet's been really handy already. 
I'm glad you got this to review. <laughs> right. Um, okay, next test. This is another keyboard test thing. So I've put the card zipping back in again. So it's all fully complete again. So I should get back that, that uh, 1100 error again. So you have to go through a test mode once more. So yep, so preset. Let's finish brewing, preset. So it says front-end front -end programming error detected, which is the thing this knows about anyway. Um, so you want to do preset mode test select, now we know where it is, define test number, which is the top one, I want to do test number 12, it might actually show up somewhere we type it, I don't know if it does, I can't see anything come up, oh there we go, up top there, just there, it does just show it. Um, Enter, then start single test. Test 12 is complete. That's it. Test 12 completes no error codes. Test E is complete. Test F is the next thing. So that looks like that's that stage finished. I'll see what that text was. Test F. Digital filter. Let's see what this text is and I'll come back. This is all keyboard stuff now, so it should be a bit quicker to do. My wife's off having fun somewhere. She sent me a picture of uh, some garden she's in. Upper left, yes, well done. You spotted it before I did. <laughs> so, let's have a look at this. Um, top screen. So, let's bring this down. Oh, that's not Be in the right program, and then push the buttons, it works a lot better. <laughs> Test F. Testing the A20 assembly. So I think maybe it's going backwards, so it's starting at the RAM and working its way towards the front balls like A20, A15, A10, I think it will do that. Spend money? No, she's got her own money to spend. We don't, we don't share money like that. She has her job, she has her income and she uses her money um, to do some stuff. You know, she has her hobbies and stuff and um, I have my hobbies which you guys know about. <laughs> my hobbies are more expensive. <laughs> so this runs self tests 13, 14, 18 to verify correct operation day 20 assembly and assumes proper operation day 30 assembly which we think works Right, so we'll find out if it's the A20 ball or if it's something else, maybe. 
right let's get testing I'll adjust this camera a bit more it gets a slightly better shot maybe wonky right let's move on to the next test which is test F now these are just keyboard tests as well so we can stop that test, we've done that one. Define test number, we'll do another one. We're already in there, so we can just go to straight to the next thing. So test 13, which just popped up over here. Enter, start single test. Test 13, complete, no errors. Okay. Now we're gonna do 14. So, define test number 14, enter, single test was it, yes, so test 14 is in progress, it's going to take a little while apparently. Took me it's taken a while. Then after that we've got to do test 18, exactly the same start single test. It's definitely is taking a long time. There we go, it's finished. Complete, no errors. So now we're going to define next one, 18. 18, enter, start single test. Another slow test apparently. So if everything passes with no errors, which it has done, no errors, we have to move on to the next test. So I've got to pull cards out again and use extenders again. So you have to take out the A20 ball, stick it on the riser card, remove the A50 and A15 assemblies, and then run through some test procedures on here the same way. So we'll get back out of this. Isn't this fun? So now we're on this bit over here. Yeah. So this is checking all of the A20 stuff it seems. Okay, so it should give us a definitive answer, it looks like, between A20 or not A20. Pass, it says A20 is good, so I'll do the test F. Well, test F complete and do test G. Or it fails and it's got something on the A20 assembly. So it'll tell us whether the A20 assembly is good or bad or not. Do 
you want a drink now and have, you have to get up in the night? You want a drink? Because I wish, at least for me, if I'm thirsty and I end up laying there thinking, God, I'm thirsty. <laughs> uh. Oh, big storm, eh? That's a bit awkward. This band's being a pain, isn't it? Fuck me, there's many problems with spam. It's interesting. Maybe I'm going mainstream or something. I'm only 500 and something subscribers away from getting 20,000. That's doing well. Pretty pleased about that. Test G is probably be the, like, the A15 assembly, I'm guessing, or somewhere. It'd be the next one down your line. So I think each test number is referencing a certain board. Or function of a board, maybe. Um, anyway, so I'll do this test here. So I pull the A20 assembly out, put on wires of cards, move A50 and A15. Okay, so I'll do that. And I also need to get the test points on the A20 card, which we're facing towards me, so that's good. I don't I'll leave it where it is. Um, no, so A15 is this board over here. I'll zoom out a bit so you can see what I'm doing, maybe. Put this out, and then we know this cover actually comes off. Makes it easier to unplug this thing. Which ball is A50? Hmm. This must be A50 here. Because it's going 10, 15, 20, 30, 40, nothing marked, 60. I'm guessing that's A50. Let me check. It will tell me here. Yeah, 20 ball. Just a minute, a little bit. Or maybe it doesn't, Tommy. <laughs> no, I haven't got to that bit yet. Nothing's been mentioned about the over LED. On the test patterns on the front panel, it doesn't actually mention that particular LED as part of the sequence. Yes, yeah, so it's working backwards in, towards the input. So it's starting at the memory side and working towards the front. So that's fine. At least it's a nice sensible way of doing it. Um, this spam's bad today. So which balls are which one's fifty? Because it didn't say there. Does the next one say it? No, that's the other ones. No, that's 20 and 15. Come on, where's it show A50? It must be showing it somewhere, surely. Ah, here we go. Is that it? Or is that 40? 20, 30, that's 40 it shows there. Where's 50? <laughs> It must have shown you've already read that bit. <laughs> uh, is that it? No, let's say 40. Again. A 40 again. Um... Come on. This isn't the same section. That's power supply stuff. Who is it? Surely it'd be here somewhere. What does this one say? This is modification stuff. 
A50 local oscillator. Here we go. This is what the card looks like. Well, look at this one, eh? That's probably why I didn't mark that card because I wasn't sure it was A50. Local oscillator noise source assembly back dating. So this is the board. So it's got an adjustment over here. Okay, let's look for that board. And that is this one here. That looks like it. Yeah, this is the beastie. This is A50. Okay, now I can mark that on the chassis. Now I know which one it actually is, for certain. We really should use label markers, but you know, lazy. So, that's what we're doing. What page are we on again? Got to find it again now. Test G, wasn't it? Should have made note what page it was on. <laughs> Test D, we're down a few pages from that one. That's that one. E, F, digital filter F. Okay, here we go. Page 225. Right, so that's that board out as well. Um, riser card on A20. It's going to short out, so that's good. I'll leave it as it is. So we'll try and get these kernels in. Okay. Wobble, 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 yeah. I think my cat wants to get out. Here is Paul. Let's show you Paul. She's always nervous. She's a very nervous cat. This is Paul wanting to get away. Yes, Paul. Yeah, she's. She doesn't like being picked up that much. She's a very nervous, skittish cat. Loves strokes, but always suspicious. Anyway, there you go. She wants to get out. And she runs. <laughs> right. So, where were we before we started playing with cats? So, I extend the card, those two assemblies are out, I'm going to turn it on now, run a test sequence. Okay, let's do it. Hey Sven, how's it going? Um, and I forgot to change the camera around. <laughs> Right, so I've now put A20 into a riser card. I've moved A50 and A15. So let's 
so we're now ready to do another test. So apparently I have to do preset mode, test selection, define test number 122. Oh look at this, we've got this RAM code along the bottom here now. RAM, you see it? Interesting sleeping and soft test. That was interesting. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, A, B, C, D, E, F. All the round chips are bad apparently. Okay. We're back to that, are we? Is that because I pulled 850 out? It's not liking something. Curious. We can't do a test like that then, can we? That is interesting, because that is not what I expected to happen. thinks all the RAM is bad. Is that because I pulled that A50 card out? Maybe I'll put that back in again. It just seems odd. Let's put A50 back in again. It could be this isn't seated properly on here or something, but I don't think that would be... This is further downstream, so I wouldn't have thought that would be an issue. Anyway, we'll see. Try this. No. It's not A50 that's doing that. Okay, so it's getting RAM failures, complete RAM failures, now that board is on a visor card. So maybe something's not seated in properly. I'll lift it out again. Debut on these, really? Could just be a bit of swarf or hair or something, or even just between the contacts causing a problem. Just double checking it all looks alright. Now George is here. Could just be just doesn't like the uh, the lens with the riser cars in there. Could be affecting it. Let's try again.
Here we go, back to where we were. Right, must have been a bad connection. Okay, back to where we were now. Must have been a bad connection when it's riser cards. Um, or something, maybe it wasn't quite seated as well as it should have been. Who knows? Anyway, I've reseated all this and now it's come back up to where we were before. So that's fine. We can get back to doing our testing. So what we'll do now is preset mode. Hey, start doing something. There's signals on the screen. Preset mode test select. It's actually doing something now. That's interesting. Okay. Um, define test number. We want 122. Enter. One to one continuous test. And I have to test on some test points. Which at least now on the front of the car, so I can get to it. So I've got to find these test points and make sure these signals are right. Once I actually figure out what these signals are supposed to be, I'll come back. So you have 302, 100, 501, 101. So yes, I need to get the oscilloscope set up on here again. Okay, there's a ground over here. So apparently, TP302 should be 10 megahertz signal. It actually helps go the right way. <laughs> oh, that's interesting. <laughs> that's funny. David, you might appreciate this one. 10.24004 megahertz. 10.240. That sounds familiar, doesn't it? <laughs> anyway, we have 10 megahertz here. It's not a very clean 10 megahertz, but we've got one. What does it say I should have? 100 nanoseconds per division. I'll see if it looks the same. Yeah, it does actually. Their, their signal's also fairly noisy. 
So, I think you're okay there. So here we go, we're supposed to have 10 megahertz on TP302 and that's what we've got. It's not a very clean waveform, but then what's in the service manual also looks a bit jagged as well. So I think this is, it's what is supposed to be expected. I think that's fine. next one TP 100 it's all the way over there um, to my ground clip just here TP100 is supposed to be one microsecond per division. Oh. Yep, okay. And the way it forms 200 millivolts division. Yep, that's fine. Two great calls. Yep, that looks fine. And then we've got. Uh, what's that one there? U702 pin 2. Hmm, let's read the instructions again. Didn't mention that bit yet. So it's just something else. Uh, P501 is the next one we've got to look at. Which is here. Data request and 501 is where? There. Uh, one microsecond division, 200 millivolts division, about two divisions high, it is. Slopes look about the same. Yep, data request is also fine. So this. One here is also fine. This is TP501. Did I recall the other one? Did I recall TP100? I don't remember. Anyway, I'll do it again just in case I didn't. Over here is TP100. That is fine. So TP501 is fine. That's also okay. The next one is TP101, which is there. And that's one microsecond division, two and millivolts division. Yep. So this is TP101, and that is also looking okay. Four divisions between them. Yep, that's right. So no issues there. We want to find something. <laughs> So now we'll do some more control stuff on the front panel here. Let's change camera view. Alright, so we can stop that test then. Oh no, I shouldn't have done that, I should have carried on. Okay, do it again. 
one, two, two. Um, enter. Continuous test. So what I have to do now is preset input. Input. Calsig on. Okay, so it's like I'm making sense so far. All right. So the next thing we've got to do is do input, which we've done. Calsig here. We turn that on. Then we've got the frequency. And define center. And 50 kilohertz. Okay. Now we'll check some more signals. So we'll TP seven oh one. This is over here, so I'll click this ground. Microsecond per division. Yeah. Okay. Got hiccups now. I'll chat, chat again in a minute. I just want to get this done. So this is the waveform we're getting at TP701 yeah. and that is a two division high, yes, one division wide, yes, that's looking fine. Nothing wrong with that. Maybe 5 by 2. Once I find it, it's five oh one, it's five oh three. Come on, where's five oh two? There it is. Not these ground clips like this. Anyway, here's what it is. There's 502, there it is. Should be 50 microseconds for division. Two hundred volts again. That looks about right. Two divisions high. About one and a quarter divisions waveform. Yeah. So this is uh, TP502 and that also looks fine, nothing wrong there. What rabbit hole do you think we're going down? No one, so use 702 pin 2. Of course we do.
See, I really think this fault is going to be on the A10 card. That's where I think the problem's going to be. So U702 pin 2. U702 is over here. Let's move the ground pin. Take the probe cover clip off. Ground it over here. And the waveform should be... Is it microseconds or milliseconds? I think it's milliseconds. Don't slip off it. I think that's supposed to be milliseconds. Okay. So it was 50 milliseconds. Yeah, that's right. Okay. So this is TP, well, U702 pin 2. I'm getting some interesting triggering going on here, but um, waveform is the correct height. It's about four divisions apart. Sometimes, I don't know, is it just random pulsing? Is this one different? I'm not sure. We get pulses. Hmm. There might be something different there. Let's just go to a slightly longer time. Just run probe on there. So that we're getting various packets. Now I don't know if they're like intentionally like that or whether that's an error. It doesn't seem to specify. Let's go to a longer time frame. Let's just catch a load of data here. Let's probe on there. I might do a single trigger. So that's what we're getting there. Does seem to be missing the odd pulse here or there. The question is, is that normal? So we've got some missing over here and there. But it's otherwise consistent, but there's the odd one here or there which is missing. Is that a sign of a data problem, I wonder? Hmm. Curious. Right, come back to the chat. Uh. Hey, John. Gene. Um. Hey Sven, okay. Uh, thanks Sven for dropping by. Have a good night. Oh, have a good sleep. Let's come back here. So it's interesting how you got that slight waveform pulse there. Whether that's right or not, that might require some further investigation. I mean, the pulses are there, the pulses are kind of correct. Um, I 
ZPH trigger. Might require further investigation, I think. We'll go back into the right thing and zoom it in. So this is one I was testing here. And it just shows the pulses like that. So one, two, three, four and a bit divisions. Yeah, so it's like four there, four and a bit again. So it looks like a repeating signal here. And we are kind of getting that, but with the odd one which isn't there. So yes, I'm suspicious. I'm definitely suspicious about this one because I would expect to see a repeating pattern like every other test point it's been a repeating pattern apart from this one so do we have a problem on this board after all could be some kind of logic problem so I think I might need to track back to U702 Um, so what does it say about that if we do get something which looks a little bit weird <sighs> troubleshoot section 7 digital 1 so there are more troubleshooting sections so I might dig into this a bit further and just see if I can find something here um, which is in section 7 is the manual 2 um, might just see that see what's in there yeah I'm thinking those gaps like it's like it's occasionally missing a pulse so it should be a pulse there but for some reason it's missed that one and that could be what's going on it's occasionally missing a pulse remember those glitches we're getting as well so how far apart are those pulses that are getting missed and you get little random glitches going on. So, um, what did I have that set to? <coughs> One second per division. So that's about half a second between those two glitches there. So each pulse is about a quarter of a second or so. Well, less than that, twentieth of a second. A fifth, sorry, a fifth of a second. <laughs> but a fifth of a second between each pulse, roughly. So you missed two pulses, did it about a second of OK, missed two pulses. There may be a IC which has got a dead output. Maybe it's a flip flop, which is bad, and it's not toggling over like it should do, or something. Because you've got the repeating misses. Yeah, that may be related. Yeah, maybe. Might be an idea. Set the tr trigger a bit lower. Hmm. Okay. Well, we found something. We finally found something which doesn't w look quite right. You know, it kind of matches, but doesn't. Mover is a omission from the manual where it doesn't mention that sometimes there's pulses that miss, or pulses are missing which shouldn't be. I think it looks wrong to me. I, I expect to see consistent pulses. It just doesn't seem like it's correct. So I think I'm going to need to look at this a bit more detail, which is um, looking in the second manual. Because it, I mean, and it would be the very last test point, wouldn't it? The very last test. <laughs> and that's where you think, oh, maybe it's not quite right.
Yeah, okay. Well, I was suspicious about the probe connection initially, but then I, I reprobed it a couple of times and shifted my positioning a little bit, and it was still doing it. I could do something to make sure I get a better probe connection and um, and try it again, just to be absolutely sure to rule that out. Just in case it is a bad connection, it just happens to be at those points. Um, but then all the other pulses look consistent and about the same level. It's like, missed one, got one, missed one, back to normal again. Hmm. Seems a little too repetitive to me to be a bad connection, but... It's possible. I should certainly rule that out. It isn't a great setup with a card standing up like that. Um, yeah. Okay, so where are we up to now? Right. I think. If I am. Yeah, I'm getting quite thirsty and I'm also getting quite hungry now so I might actually cut it, call it a day for now and I'll go and investigate this next section section 7 for the A20 assembly and go and do some research on that before I go any further or should I retest I should retest first to make sure I'm not getting bad probing because I'm suspecting it's car 10 I think it's A10 because of the voltage being dragged down a little bit on the 24 volt rail. Well, I should say the 24 volt rail, the 24 volt rail being a bit low, which is what made me think about A10. Um, yeah, um, right. I'll reprobe this first, wall it out, wall out bad probing, in case I go down a rabbit hole, which I shouldn't be going down. So. I should just retest it again. And I've lost the page in the manual. Oh, there we go program close itself on the tablet. Right. So I need to do preset input I if I should pause that as well. What if that changes anything? Um Input CalSig on frequency define center fifty kilohertz and recheck that probing again. Probe on. Trigger. Single trigger. Anything? Hmm. Well, 
Oh, I get anything, that's one. Is it because I need to do the other test mode first? Maybe I need to have the other test mode running first. Let me do that. So. Uh, preset mode. Test select. Define test. 122. Enter. Continuous test, wasn't it? Yes. I just want to make sure I follow the same process. Then preset again, which I think cancels that test anyway. Input. Calsig on. Frequency. Define center. 50 kilohertz. Check this again. There you go, getting something now. Okay. Let's just read through to that. Lots of missing pulses in that one. Let's probe again. Let's try and dig the probe into the solder instead of resting on the bloody pin. Alright, let's try again. A couple of pulses missing from that one. Let me do just do a normal trigger. And let's speed up the acquisition time a little bit, it's taking too long. It's wobbling things around. So I'm swabbling around the card on the riser. My probe just slipped off. And again. So that glitching there? We did till the camera turned off. Is it just my riser card being a bit glitchy? Those look fine. Until I say that, then there's two misses. <laughs> we'll pull the wiser card slightly one way. Push it the other way.
That one's perfect. I think it could be me. I think it's a bad connection. It could be. I don't know. So we're getting these random missed pulses. I'm not sure whether it's a issue with the probing, an issue with using the riser card, or not, because sometimes it's absolutely fine, and other times you get a couple of pulses, but it's always one pulse, miss one, will be pulse, missed, get, another, get a pulse, miss a pulse. It's always two pulses that are missed, and they're always with a pulse in between them. So I was keeping probing and just watching it to see what happens. So there's a couple of pulses missed there. So I'm not sure if it's just bad probing and all the wiser cards or there's some marginal trigger level there somewhere or something. I thought you just got quite a long acquisition time there you go, it's me with bad probing there. So okay, maybe it's just bad connections there because this is just me moving things around a little bit in the wise card, just bending it a little bit one way or the other. Yeah, see that, that one's almost fine, there's a pulse missing at the end there. It might just be bad probing or, or maybe the wiser card's giving us some trouble. I think that may not be the issue, might be something else. Check for any hot chips. Everything seems fine. I reckon it's probably right after all. Okay. I reckon it's probably right. My dodgy soldering and riser cards, yeah, it could be, eh? Yeah. Yeah, I suspect a preset probably just does a reset. Starts again from scratch. So. Um, I think it probably is just bad probing, or maybe it's a slightly marginal signal, which is sometimes missing. Or the riser card connections are a little bit dodgy. Well, it's not liking the the connection going through the wiser cards. Yeah. So my suspicion is card ten. Hmm. Okay, I oh, shall add that to my notes. Well, yeah, I'll do add some notes. Also find my pen. Um, so we've got 24 volts is a bit low. Plus 24 volts is low. I know that anyway mentally. Yes, 0.3 low. 0.2 volts low. And a 20 um, U702 pin two pulse. Make a note of that. Maybe dodgy. Right. Okay, I think I'm going to say it's potentially bad probing or bad connection or something, you know, being in a wise card. I think I'm going to go with that. Um, and then if I I'll continue the testing process. If I don't find anything, I'll double back to this one and recheck this again. Maybe with, maybe I'll solder wire on or something like that and 
put the card back into the board and just run some flying leads out from that. Uh, that would eliminate the riser card and eliminate bad probing at the same time. And I could do some better testing on that. So that'll be what I'll do, I think. Is I need to double back, I'll do that. No, I can't reach it without the riser card on it. But there's a way of testing it if I, you know, I've fixed gear before with that wires of cards and it means, you know, you take the card out, you solder some wires onto it and put it back in and you probe on the end of the wires. Um, it can introduce noise and stuff too, obviously, but it's a way of doing something if you don't have the parts you need. So I'm likely to do that if I can't find anything else. I'm going to put this to ooh, page 250. It mentions that specifically, does it? Well... So we're on page 225 now, page 250, here we go. Yeah. But does it tell us how to fix that? <laughs> um, that's a 12 series, okay. Let's just go through the different codes. On site. Uh. Test one is supposed to be a global confidence test. Yes. Yeah. So it mentions car ten here. Car ten front end register. Again, this comes back to car ten. Yeah. Hey Peter, how's it going? Um, oh yes, that's a point. I'll just change views. Well done. <laughs> Somebody's paying attention. It's not me. <laughs> right, so on to page 249, which is just ahead of that one, it starts to talk about these tests. In test one, which is what this is part of the group for, um, it says, make this a bit bigger again. So it's initializing our ports and the A10 front end register, which sounds familiar, doesn't it? Front end register. So A10 is looking suspicious again for another reason. So not only is the 24 volt rail looking a little bit low, which feeds the A10 card, we've also got this front end register mentioned for A10. And it's still on a suspicion list as a potential failure point. We haven't eliminated it yet because it's working backwards towards it. Um, I'm going to continue testing through the A15 card. I'll test that one and then I'll do the A10 last. Even though I think I should be jumping to the A10 card. I just want to follow through the process and make sure I'm not missing anything. Um, so like if I go down here there's that page 50 it was mentioned or 250 right front end programming error right familiar so I see it occurs when the front end control register circuit setup is read by the process and found to be correctly set so it could be the front end control register circuit has got a fault, or the processor is not reading it correctly. So that's what this whole process of stepping backwards through it is doing. It's making sure that the, the process it goes through is to make sure that the processor is seeing the correct data. Yeah, I'm going to keep working backwards, um, but I think it's likely to be the A10 card. Um, that is, I don't know whether it's coming from that IC or to that IC. I haven't looked at diagrams for that yet. That's in volume two. 
I believe. Yes, what I'm to have in there. Anyway. So I'm thinking about calling it for the day anyway. I mean, it's one o'clock now, so going to have some lunch and stuff. Let so many people go to sleep. If Peter's only just got here. <laughs> um, I think that's where we're going to go to right now, is just leave it there. I'll put that card back in. I think I'll assume that card is good. So let's go back to page 225. Make sure I've basically finished that process unless I've missed something else. So if we assume, instead of a fail, we'll assume a pass. Alright, so test F will be the A15 card and G will be... Oh, sorry, test G will be the A15 card. And then H is probably the A10 card or something. So there's only a couple more things to actually eliminate. But I'm getting a bit tired of talking and stuff now as well. And I want to have some lunch and stuff. And have, a, have a coffee and what have you. So I'm going to call it for today. And I'll continue recording video on, on the repair. I won't be doing live streams for a little while. I've got, well, we've got a lot of events to work at, so I'm going to be busy for a while. The, I think, what's my next day off? My next day off, I think, is April. Let's check it. Yeah, probably. I'm not sure. Yeah, April. Yep. My next day off from today is the 2nd of April. So, um, won't be in live streams at least, unless I do get an opportunity from something being cancelled maybe, I don't know. But, um, yeah, so that will be it, I'm afraid, for until then, maybe, apart from normal videos. So, yeah, I'll finish this off in normal video. Okay, I'm recording footage for this. And I think that'll be where I've got compiled here on this setup. Depends how far I get, I suppose. That'll probably be not this Friday, but the following Friday's video, potentially. I've got a few things going on that might be. Depends how far I get with it. Hey, we've got something fixed. We fix the RAM problem. I'm just surprised there's two problems. Anyway, it happens. Maybe there's a power surge and it flicked through a couple of circuits and blew a couple of things. It happens. All right, thanks if I'm dropping by. And um, don't forget to give us a thumbs up before you leave. And that sort of stuff. And I'll catch you all later on.